but thank you. Okay, all I want is for us to vote in more in in more positive concept that can be done, and that's by individually voting on who who you wish to become president. All the other data or slander is unnecessary. We live in the most beautiful world in the, in, in the country and our state, I mean, and we should be able to, to, to do this because everyone's looking at us. They're not looking at uh, South Side. They're not looking at the East Side. They're looking at Downtown Neighborhood Council and they're looking at us to be the leader. So we should be a leader. We were elected to lead and give directions and we're slow to speak and quick to hear. So to slow you. Slow your roll down when you when you hit what you hear from individuals because not everything is true. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Wendell. Uh, and again, I would like to remind board members of the code of conduct. Please be courteous of others uh, as you speak, and also uh, refer to uh, actual factual statements. Um, again, uh, so we'll move on to Ryan. Ryan, go ahead. Thank you, Jose. Uh, I actually wanted to bring up what you just mentioned, Jose, as well. You know, we just took an oath to be courteous and not slander our fellow people in this council. I understand if there are grievances. I think maybe Claudia gave an example of, you know, her, her view. I think Rick gave an example of the view. Tony, I respect you a lot, um, but I don't think that what you said was appropriate or accurate. And if you have something like that to say that's pretty damning, I really would hope that you would either name the person who said that or show some proof. Second of all, you mentioned a few things that I believe were inaccurate. First of all, we do not have a board until about 20 minutes ago when we just seated this board. So there was no executive committee. There was no way to create an executive committee. None of that existed. As you know, um, you know, any complaints of this kind of stuff, I believe there were some complaints from what I've heard around uh, the water cooler uh, and everything went through the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Everything today has been kosher. Jose, can you please verify that, that everything that's being done today has been done in the way of, you know, neighbor, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, everything's been done correctly. Is that correct, Jose? Yeah, uh, so the process of the board seating, pro uh, for the board seating uh, is followed by, per the 2019 board seating policy that the, 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 the neighbor council would be following. Uh, so for there is no executive committee currently. So what point of information? Once I, Richard, I'm speaking. I'm sorry. I'm speaking with Jose. Go ahead, Jose. Okay. Once elections are certified, that's uh, that's when the new board will be re uh, instated uh, and resets pretty much the committees, the the the, the committees, the the officers and liaisons. So all that will need to be uh, appointed by the board at the first official meeting that's, that the, that the gate seated at, which is today. Thank you, Jose. So in other words, there is no executive committee. There's no way to create an executive committee before this meeting. So that point is irrelevant. Ryan, Ryan second of all, Rick, I'm sorry, it's my turn to speak. I, I wanted to all, honor the president it. does not appoint the treasurer. The treasurer is voted by this board and will happen today. So anything about appointing Tony or any of that stuff, none of that stuff is relevant. I, I And now I want to get to the actual facts of Patty, okay? Instead of defending all this, this, this you know, rancor that's been basically thrown around. In my view, as we all just mentioned, and Rick actually mentioned it himself, to his credit, um, the president is not supposed to be here to impose their will, to bend this board in any way. What I admire about Patty, what she's done in the time that she's been here, she has basically been a procedure wonk, which is what we need in this position. This is the captain of the ship, okay? Second of all, she never votes on almost anything that happens in this board. Unless she must be a tiebreaker, she never votes. What her job is, is to keep these meetings from being 12 hours long to being three hour long meetings, to have an order, to give people equal time, and to pre present things in a way that are digestible and manageable for this board and for the public, which is a board of volunteers. What I respect about Patty, as she just mentioned, she's been here for a long time, she understands the ropes, and she's willing to admit that there is definitely a time for a transfer to new power, okay? She's not a power hungry person. Nobody on this board gets any money or anything, you know, any other benefits beyond really just doing well for this community. And Patty has been there from the beginning. My family, I'm sure Michael Delijani is another example, has been in this community since the 1990s. And we've seen the work that Patty's done and how committed she is. 
Yeah. 80s. Michael, Michael beats me. Michael was there before I was born. We've seen the commitment that she has to this neighborhood. As I said, she is doing a thankless, thankless job. Look at what everyone's saying right now. She has not steered any vote in the entire time that I've been in this committee, five, six years. She has never pressured me. I've never heard any kind of, people get upset about things that happen in neighborhood council. Patty's the face of it. So she gets all the slack. But please consider the reality of all this stuff beyond all the sour grapes that you're hearing today. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Was a point of information, if I might. Is it not true that the amended uh, board seating uh, requirements, which we are operated on, were amended to provide that board terms actually run from July 1 to June 30, and a board could select to start, or is that still before the commission? That's why it's a point of information. Yeah, so regarding the 2021, uh, the 2021 board seating policy, uh, the board would need to take action to adopt that policy, uh, which means that the uh, former board would then run all the way to serve until June 30th, and the new one will uh, start beginning July 1st uh, of the fiscal of the new fiscal year. But the board would need to take action to adopt that policy. If the no action is taken to adopt the, uh, adopt the policy, then the 2019 uh, policy goes into the vault, which is uh, what we're following at this time. So who would have brought, uh, one other point of information, if I might, please, who would have brought that before the agenda sitting process? Because we did have a meeting in March. Would we have had the opportunity to know that? And is that one of those things that never made it to the board so that we would be required to use this meeting as the, uh, in the, the 2019 rules, as opposed to getting in line with uh, Empower LA would like to see July 1 through June 30? Where if I may, if I may, Jose, Jose, I asked Jose which one we would be doing, and I was told that we were under the 2019, and that's the way it was. I do not make those kinds of decisions. I let Dunn do it. Again, and just to clarify as, as well, it's just that uh, the, the policy was released at the beginning of March, the draft, and then uh, the official uh, was uh, later at mid-March, uh, the, the department sent out to all neighborhood councils. Uh, letting them know that uh, this is gonna be the, 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 the seating policy. And if they, they have the options for this elections to either follow through with the 2019 uh, board seating policy or the 2021 policy, which then seats the board at the beginning of the, of the new fiscal year. Jose, can I just say all of this stuff regarding procedure is a red herring. Look at the agenda. It's five things in the agenda. We're voting people to create the board. None of this has anything to do with favoritism or anything. Patty or nobody else has any kind of upper hand here. We're creating a new board and we're voting people in. Executive committees and all this stuff, this is just an excuse to say, to, to create some kind of malfeasance that's not there. I'm sorry. I think, uh, Jose, may I, may I say something? I have two things to say. One thing is about the executive committee. I, I mean, according to our bylaws, we're supposed to post the agenda, correct? Yes. 72 hours in advance in a physical place. Mm -hmm. well, if there's no executive committing, who did that? Uh, so we work, the department will work with the, with the board. So mostly the chairs will uh, coordinate that in order to make sure that the agenda is, is then set for the incoming board uh, to- So uh, who did that? Who huh? posted it? Uh, the posting, uh, Patty- who, who, I who did. The... Naira did. Naira posted the, the agenda. I have a picture of it if uh, anybody is really. I'm not, I'm not saying, I know that Naira posted because I oh. talked to her when she was posting it because we didn't know if she was going to post it or if I was going to post it. The agenda has been posted. My point is, it has been posted by who? If there's no executive committee, how is Naira then to post the agenda if she's no longer the vice president or I no longer the secretary? So there is a... a there is a gray area whether we are continuing with our duties or not. You know, so much so that Naira posted the agenda or I was going to post the agenda, but we were still working, you know what I mean? And uh, it's, I understand that we have the option on not having that executive committee meeting, it's fine. But we in the future need to work better to clarify what our duties are once, because I'm still getting, I'm still getting a uh, public request act I'm still getting, you know, and so am I the secretary? Am I not the secretary until this point? We don't know. And that's something that, not to uh, say that we did anything wrong, which is not what I'm saying here, 
All I'm saying is that this is something that we need to clarify in the future with Don and, and, uh, and Bonk to identify what, what duties carry through because just the president is not the only person that does something for this board as the executive committee meeting is not just meeting just to approve agendas. There's a lot that we do um, behind the scenes to make, make the machine work, right? So it's just like asking for clarification because up to today, I still had people calling me like, wh where's my link, you know, what, to, to get into the meeting. And I, I, I'm like, I don't have an answer for them, you know? Understood. So, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, any other board member comments? Yes. I'm sorry, who, who was that? Uh, this is Michael Lerijani. Oh, Michael, oh, okay, go ahead, Michael. Okay, I'm, I'm one of the original uh, board members. In fact, I helped to form this committee and other committees in downtown Los Angeles as a volunteer most of my life since I was a UCLA student, in fact. From what I see here, with all the respect to Richard, uh, I see more of Donald Trump here, which is divisive uh, tone and uh, comments. I want to remind everyone that the ideology behind Never Council is to bring in uh, the, the, everyone who lives and works downtown from different class of society together in a very family oriented, nice environment. From what I see today already, I, honestly, I would rather to resign if this committee is going to be so div divisive and politically divisive. This is not a, this is not a um, political movement. This is to bring the community together, enhance the quality of life. And uh, in this difficult time that for the past year that we've been through, if anything, we need to be really work together to help everyone who really suffer and is still continue to suffer in downtown Los Angeles. And honestly, I don't see anyone else at this point who has the knowledge, experience, personality like Patty has shown to me for over the past years. She has brought in, look at me and everyone, all of you guys. She brought outreach. She outreach to everyone from different type, uh, the level of the community. And she continues to do so as a volunteer base. She's not getting paid or anything. This is her passion. And uh, if anything, we need to really give her uh, the, the, really the, the, a big hug and appreciation for what she has accomplished, what she has done, and uh, stand behind her and ask her to continue take downtown from this difficult time for the next two years, transfer this administration to anyone else who gets familiar with this organization, and uh, for the benefit of downtown Los Angeles, I really strongly appreciate that everyone once again support Paddy Berman and uh, uh, unite and keep the unity here and stay away from all this negativity, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Any other board member comments? I would like to speak. All right, go ahead, Debbie. Um, so I'm one of the new class of board members. Um, I just want to speak on how I feel about why I ran and, and, and again, I agree with Michael, let's not be political, let's not be slanderous. I was never really into politics. I just wanted, I moved downtown just to have a good time, you know, not have to drive, yeah. walk to the store, you know, walk, walk to bars. Um, but definitely, I, I feel like let's focus for this presidential vote on what they said about the policies of what they want to do for D-Link, what they think D-Link should represent and not so much on you know, the, the Trumpism of it. Um, I personally am going to vote for Rick just because in the past five years that I've been downtown, I felt like I wasn't seeing what I expected to see out of neighborhood council. I used to live in Venice, um, that neighborhood council kind of operates a bit differently. Um, so I, I also ran because I wanted to see a change um, and that's it. So I'm just saying let's let's keep it non-political, non-slanderous. Let's vote on 
what we want DLUNC to be as a volunteer neighborhood empowerment organization. Thanks. Uh, I see uh, James Lund. Uh Go ahead. I just had something short to say. Um, I'm a new board member, but um, I've lived in downtown Los Angeles for more than a decade. And everything that I've heard about Patty has been extremely positive. And I think that we should continue with her after we've had such a difficult time in this neighborhood due to COVID. Um, she's been doing a great job. And I think to differ from that at this time would just cause confusion and yeah, that's it. Great, thank you. Uh, see Jim, go ahead. Thank you. I just want to echo uh, what Michael and Ryan has said, have said about Patty. I think that all that she has done for the council over these many years, she deserves a last two years and she's gained nothing from this position. She's done her job honorably. She's made many friends along the way. She's very well liked around everybody in the community. I think she deserves another two years. Thank you. Uh, Kevin? Uh, one thing I just want to note for the board is I know a couple of people have mentioned not wanting to be political. Um, this is a political office, so by definition, um, politics will happen on this board. Um, I think there's a way that we can operate not without a partisan lens, which I think is something we should all strive for. But um, our work is very much directly related to politics, so um, that is part of our duty. Um, so just wanted to say that. Thank you. Uh, any other board members uh, before moving over to the public? Seeing none. All right, so I'll move over to the public. So those in attendees, uh, if you have a public comment, uh, please press the raise hand button on your screen. For those that called, uh, that'll be star nine. Uh, I'll be calling everyone uh, in the order that they rose their hands. Uh, you'll have one minute to speak uh, on the agenda item for the nomination of the president. Uh, please make sure to stay on the agenda item. All right. So I'll start off. Uh, Catherine, go ahead and unmute. Hi. First of all, I had to sign in uh, giving my email address, which I believe is in violation of the Brown Act. So I just wanted to get that out of the way first. My name is Catherine McNenny. I am a member of the Skid Row Neighborhood Council Formation Committee. First, congratulations to all new d board members. I urge all of you not to vote for Ms. Berman as d president, and here's why. In 2017, there was what was called a neighborhood council subdivision election downtown, the first of its kind. Our formation committee sought to break away from the d to be able to focus specifically on our very unique issues. A lot of people, including myself, spent a lot of time, not only on our application to subdivide, but also on get out the vote outreach. Unfortunately, we did not prevail at that time, although our fight is not over. At no time before, during, or after our election, Ms. Berman agendized this event, nor did she agendize the many grievances filed regarding DLANC's interference in this election, despite this being something they are supposed to do according to their bylaws. These are not the actions of a true leader. These, these actions were uh, uh, fightful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Nicholas, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, first off, uh, these endless debates on civility mean nothing when civilization itself is collapsing around us. At 3.30 a.m. last Friday, a homeless individual broke into our building and then subsequently hammered out my apartment window with a fire extinguisher while my wife and I slept and held us in our, our unit for 22 minutes. And yes, I have evidence for that. And yes, there will be a police report. I wholeheartedly support Richard Norton because frankly, DLAC has done nothing, accomplished nothing, except as far as I can tell, architectural reviews. If you do not represent our interests, there is only one interest, solving this disaster around us. I don't want to hear anything else and I don't care about anything else. And I tell you that as a 10 year resident stakeholder who defended my wife's life last Friday, please elect Mr. Norton. Thank you, I am done. Thank you for your comment. Uh, okay, next person is Peter. Peter Clune, go ahead, unmute. 
Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, welcome to all the new board members. Um, first of all, amazing to hear Michael Dallajani worried about Donald Trump since he's a multi-thousand dollar Trump donor. Um, but just want to say, you know, as a stakeholder who's tried to participate in D-Link, I have firsthand run into the obstruction tactics of Patty Berman multiple times. Um, I have seen her not properly agendize uh, people who've nominated themselves for vacant um, board seats, um, delay them an extra month when they should have been put on the agenda. Um, I have personally put forward stakeholder agenda items and had her unilaterally uh, refuse to put them on the agenda. Um, I have one that's been pending since May of last year. Um, I have seen her threaten to limit public comment only to comments that she likes or views as being positive. Um, I honestly didn't expect uh, this to happen, to there to be any opposition. I was hoping to just encourage you all to be vigilant about these things and make sure they didn't happen going forward. Um, but am now in the position to say, yeah, I hope you vote for a change. Well, can you please wrap up? Uh, time's about oh. Thank you, that's good. Okay. All right, next is uh, Josh. Uh, go ahead. Hi, my name is Josh. Uh, I am a 19 year resident of downtown Los Angeles. Um, I personally love Patty Berman. I think she's incredible. She's been amazing for our neighborhood and our community. Um, but I do think that uh, it's time for a change in downtown Los Angeles. Um, I am not I would never say anything bad about Patty or the job that she's done for our community over these so many years. She's an incredible asset to all of us. Um, but I would like to see what someone new might be able to bring to the table. It could be a huge mistake, but things are pretty bad out here right now, and I'm willing to try something new. And so uh, I encourage all of you to try and um, vote for Richard. Uh, just to see if we can't, you know, do something new, get things going, solve this homelessness crisis here right now. Um, and I also want to remind everyone here that you are just not representative of our community. It's very sad, but the, the person who got the most votes was Patty with 152 votes. There's 70,000 residents in downtown Los Angeles. Please consider everything that you're doing and get more people involved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, Jamie. Go ahead on mute. Hello, my name is Jamie. Uh, I work downtown in the fashion district. Um, so I just am interested in trying to help the issues that I know are in that area. Um, I myself have called in and, and been somewhat engaged in this neighborhood council. Um, and actually, I, it makes it really easy. There was a speaker just a moment ago. His name was Peter. Uh, I just want to second everything that Peter says. I've seen Patty shut down meetings, um, just argue with constituents. Uh, it's just time for a change. Uh, I really, really am surprised that this is on the table and I implore you to please vote for Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessa, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just, <clears throat> sorry. I agree with uh, Jamie and, and Peter and a few other callers. Um, I don't think give me more time so that I can set up a successor or that I can wrap things up properly is a good enough reason for us to continue um, having Patty in leadership. Um, and I, I was really encouraged by what Richard had to say. So I look forward to seeing what what can happen with um, with him as president. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, let's see, next. Uh, Elizabeth, go ahead and unmute. Hi everybody, Elizabeth Peterson Gower. I thank you all for your service. Um, we really appreciate you all being here. Um, I've been a resident since 1997. Um, until last May, March, I had 40 employees. I had to um, let 30 go and I sent them out into the, all over the country. No one would stay here because after the riots, we were all so scared physically from what happened. I have employees that are still here. I've owned businesses, two businesses, three businesses in downtown and been a downtown resident. What I've seen since being here since 1997 and the change that this board made 
during these last years with Patty at the helm has been unbelievable. The fights and the drama that we've been through to become a city, a world-class city again, has been intense and deeply challenging. Right now, what I see is 1997 again. And what I see with um, the city officials and what they're going through and the drama they're going through is us that much. And I think it's very, very important that we stay with a board that's well-versed and can help us because right now we're all fighting for our lives out here to fighting to keep our business. Time alive. is up. So vote for Patty, please. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ceci, uh, go ahead. I'm you. Hi, my name is, uh, oh, I think I'm on echo. Do you have an echo on me? No, you're fine. I'm on. Hi, my name is Ceci Mahar, and I've been a downtown resident for about four and a half uh, Ceci, uh, you kind of far. Can you get closer to, to the mic? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My name is Ceci Nahar, and I've been a resident uh, in downtown for about four and a half years. And uh, I've, you know, really tried to pay attention to what DLANC's doing and get connected. And it's extremely difficult. And this is an organization that's just been terrible with transparency, terrible with outreach, terrible with really engaging the community. And I know all of you ran on either renewing downtown or making downtown better. And this is the moment to really focus on that new, new leadership, new ideas, new passion, new engagement, not denigrating Patty at all. She is a wonderful person and has given a lot to downtown. And we gotta thank her and thank heaven she's still on the board because she's gonna contribute and can still even transition. She can still even help help Rick transition. So there's no need to be um, like upset that she's not gonna be part of this. Patty, you're always, you know, you're clearly part of this. Uh, please wrap it up. Okay, so I just really wanna encourage you, new leadership, transparency, engagement, make me part of your organization. I'm dying to be a volunteer for you. Time's up. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Uh, Jose, I'd just like to note that on the agenda, it says that speakers have two minutes. Are we changing that to one minute only? Uh, for general public comments, to two minutes. Okay, can I make a general public comment as well at this time? Uh, no, at uh, this time it's uh, only for a public comment on the nominations for president. Okay, thank you. You can begin my clock. So my name is Michael S. I'm calling to provide encouragement to our newly elected board. Specifically, I'm proud to have Richard Norden as my area representative. Rick's pragmatism and focus on tangible objectives drew me to reconsider a personal bid for the seat, instead support his candidacy. He's the type of leader we need right now guiding this body going forward. With that, I'd like to quote a preliminary injunction filing submitted last night in the LA Alliance Federal lawsuit. On April 7th, 2021, an elderly disabled man who was confined to a wheelchair and took fentanyl to manage his chronic pain, burned to death, unable to escape the fire that engulfed his tent on Skid Row. His charred corpse remained on the sidewalk for hours, a testament to decades of intentional inactions and deliberate indifference by the city and county. What we have seen over the last few years is indifference by this body as well. And I am encouraging you all to start looking at new ways at addressing our problems. If our problems are not addressed, I fear that more extreme voices will take up the space out of frustration of the continued inaction. As a result, I'm, con I'm encouraging you all to do a better job and to start thinking about how you can take more direct action. And I feel that by electing Richard as our next president for D-Link, we are doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Kate, go ahead. On you. Kate, uh, you can unmute now. Oh, hi. Um, I'm kind of surprised at the descriptions that I'm hearing because if I didn't know better, I wouldn't recognize that they're about Patty Burma. Um, on the issue of homelessness alone, Patty knows the issue on a very personal level because she sponsored and eventually adopted a girl who was homeless on Skid Row. 
and is now an adopted daughter and part of her family. But the larger point goes back to D-Link, and it's not an accident. The D-Link is routinely referenced as the most effective neighborhood council in the city. There have been no scandals. There's no grifting by board members. There's no credible accusations of mismanagement for a reason. Dunn's never had to effectively take over D-Link because he didn't need to. It's been well run for years. And that's because of Patty's focus, committed stewardship. So downtown now has been hit disproportionately hard by the unrest and the pandemic. It's not the time for a new president. It is the time, and we have it now, for new voices at the board level to consider new paradigms to take D-Link to its well-deserved next level. But let's do it with the one person uniquely able to bring all sides together to make that happen. That's Patty Berman. Thank you. Time's up. All right, uh, next is a uh, caller with the last three numbers, 829. Uh, in order to unmute, press star six. Hi, thank you. I'm Blair Beston and I'm speaking today as a downtown stakeholder to support Patty as president. I, I have so much respect for all of you for volunteering your time to make the community more livable. And I have to say, I've known Patty a long time. We've watched downtown evolve. And over the years, I've seen, you know, a few contentious issues come up, uh, both in meetings and sadly behind the scenes. Um, I'll tell you that, you know, criticisms of the presidency are not met with people who are really willing to do the work necessarily once the rubber meets the road. And, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of logistical constraints that come with the job as the president. Um, I can tell you she's kept the ship steady and she's given it weight and she's taken time to cultivate relationships over the years. And that takes a certain skill set. Um, you know, Kate mentioned stewardship, and, and that's absolutely what we have in Patty. Um, and then Kate also mentioned new voices, and, and I agree. Um, you know, it's no accident when you have people coming from downtown who have been here for years. Uh, Jacob, go ahead and unmute. Hi. I just want to say, you know, I've known Patty Berman for almost a decade now, and she got involved in downtown Los Angeles initially just because there wasn't a dry cleaner downtown in the historical. That's what she wanted. She was here in a time when the neighborhood was nothing like it is now, when there was crime on the streets, when our businesses were closed. We're back there again now. We're pre-2010 again, and we all hope our neighborhood very quickly gets back to thriving and succeeding. Patty led the ship through that area when there was crime on the streets, when we didn't have street activation. And because we're there now, I can think of no better and no more perfect person to lead in these final two years. I think she's earned that. Uh, and I ask for you to support her. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, so that's it for public comment. Uh, we'll move over to the board for uh, board action. Uh, so right now, we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, so the board, uh, board members, please make sure to either call out for, for the vote for either Patty, Rick, or uh, abstain uh, from the vote. Uh, just uh, let me know uh, to make it clear. All right, uh, start off with the roll call. Uh, Claudia? Uh, I, I suppose I should unmute myself, right? Uh, yeah. That's what you, you get for like doing so much listening. You just get used to listening. Um, I'm voting for Rick today. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tony? Rick? Uh, Patty? I'm voting for myself. Okay. Uh, Michelle? Rick. Window. Patty. Mario. Patty. Rick. Uh, uh, 
following in Patty's footsteps, I'm voting for myself too. Okay, uh, Ryan. Patty. All right, Lori. Richard. Michael. Patty. Tyler. Patty. Okay, uh, Kevin. Rick. Uh, Melinda. I abstain. Okay. And, uh, Pablo. Rick. Rick, okay. Alan. Patty. Patty, okay. Deputy. Okay. I'm abstaining. Okay. Uh, Cody. Rick. Jim. Patty. Debbie. Rick. James. Patty. Uh, Jehan. I'm going to just vote in what it sounds like what the constituents want and uh, vote for Richard. Okay. Votes. Uh, one minute. Uh, Rick. And two abstentions. Okay, so the vote count is a uh, count nine for Patty, ten for Rick, two abstentions. The abstentions are. Uh, Melinda and Ebony. So, Rick, you're appointed to the president. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for everybody, to everyone who voted for Patty. This is a partnership of all of us. I talked about collaboration in the electoral. Uh, uh, forum we have, and that's an important thing. Uh, we've seen transitions not go well. Uh, we must transition this well. And I uh, just thank everyone for the confidence. This is a again a we thing, and uh, we will we will move through this with diligence and care, and go forward. Thank you. Great, uh, so the next uh, seat for the uh, officers is the Vice President of Administration. Is there a, uh, before uh, call for nominations, I'm just gonna uh, read out the description for it. So the Vice President of Administration shall serve as president in the absence of the president, uh, be responsible for the operational and logistics, log logistical needs of the board and chair the rules and selections committee the vice president of administration shall also maintain oversight of all D-line committees. Is there a nomination for the vice president of, of administration? Uh, Claudia? I would like to nominate Naira if she wants to continue. Naira, Naira do you accept the nomination? I am flattered. Um, I'd like to see if anyone else is interested. Um, I am all for better downtown, but again, if there is anyone else that would like to nominate themselves, looks like not. 
So are there any other nominations uh, for, for the Vice President of Administration? I don't see any other nominations, Naira. <laughs> so that, that means uh, you'll be accepting? <laughs> All right. <laughs> OK. Thank right, you uh, for the vote of confidence. <laughs> All right. Uh, first off, uh, before, uh, can I get uh, the, the motion uh, to appoint the vice president uh, for, uh, for downtown Los Angeles uh, of administration, uh, Naira? Is motion, there... Claudia. Claudia, motions. Is there a second? I, think, I second it, Wendell. Wendell seconds. Great. Uh, all right. So, Naira, any comments uh, that you'd like to say for the board? Well, um, it's been my second term and I've learned a lot during this past two years and I know that downtown is hurting and it's my home and I have my businesses here and I want an enhanced downtown as well. I want people that want to live here. I want myself to feel safe to walk in downtown. I did not feel safe for the past year to be to walk out on the street. I want tourism to come back. I want our streets to be cleaner. And I feel like this is a partnership and this is a teamwork. This is not something that an individual is, would be able to do it. We all have to work together as a team. Great. Uh, any comments from the board? Seeing none. Uh, I'll move over to the public for anybody who'd like to make a public comment for the uh, vice president uh, of administration nomination, press the raise hand button on your screen or star nine if you've called. Uh, seeing no hands for public comment, then I'll move back over for the board vote. So we're gonna do a roll call vote uh, for the vice president of administration for the downtown Los Angeles uh, uh, for Naira. Uh, so to start off with Claudia. Yes. Tony. Yes, absolutely. Patty. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Miguel. Yes. Naira. Yes. Uh, Rick? Yes. Enthusiasm. Ryan? <coughs> Ryan? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Lori? Yes. Michael? Michael? Uh, I think he's, he's having issues connecting to audio. It's showing. Okay, so I'll come back to Michael. Uh, Tyler? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Linda? Yes. Pablo? Yes. Alan? I'm sorry, but it's yes. Ellen, is that a yes? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Well, well, yes, yes. Uh, Ebony? Yes. Cody? Yes, yes. Jim? Yes. Debbie? Yes. James? <laughs> Uh, Yehan? Yes. Great. Uh, and let me check. Michael? Still connecting to audio. Okay, so just mark him absent for the moment. So it's uh, unanimous. Congratulations, Naira, uh, with one absent, uh, which is Michael. Thank you, everyone. Great. Uh, so the next uh, position is the Vice President of, of Outreach. Uh, again, I'll just uh, start off with the description of, uh, 
the vice president of outreach and communication shall prepare and release media statements after approval by the president oversee the lanks website and be responsible for maintaining and updating the stakeholders database and ensuring its con confidentiality routinely inform the public of the lank activities actively Solic uh, solicit interest and participation in DLANG's activities and chair, chair the outreach committee. So that, that will be the duties and, and uh, powers of the vice president of outreach and communications. Is there a nomination from the board? Uh, I see uh, Pablo. Yeah, I'd like to nominate myself. Okay. Uh, great. And, well, and okay, uh, James, see your hand up. Is there? I would also like to nominate myself. Okay, James, not you. And uh, Claudia. Hi, I'm nominating myself. And Claudia. Okay. Great. Uh, any others? I don't see any other nominations. So uh, would the board make the uh, motion to appoint the vice president of outreach and communications? Uh, you know, the candidates would be Pablo, uh, James, and Claudia. Is there somebody who would like to make the motion? I so move. Yes, I will. I will. Right, uh, so it was Kevin first, right? Yes, it was. Kevin, okay. Uh, and when you we second it, Wendell. Okay, Wendell seconds. Great. Uh, so I'll open it up for the candidates. So starting off with uh, Pablo for the candidates uh, for your statements uh, for the board. So I spent some time on the outreach committee uh, the last term, and getting people involved and informed with DLANC is of utmost importance. And I think I bring a new vision and a new voice to doing so. And um, I look forward to working with everyone on the board to get our city involved, get downtown involved, get more people out and aware, voting, participating. That's it. Okay, great. Uh, James, go ahead. I'm asking you for the opportunity to take the lead on one of the most important duties that uh, the downtown neighborhood council has, uh, which is outreach to its stakeholders. I know that I'm new to this council, uh, but I'm not new to downtown Los Angeles. As I previously said, I've spent my entire adult life here. And for all that time, I've been doing community outreach through my art and would love to take the opportunity to take what I've been doing with that and use it in a new way. Most importantly, I'd like to empower every council member and every stakeholder to use their voice and their skill to perform outreach in areas that are important to them. Uh, my goal in the next two years is to look back and say, we did this, we all reached out to the community and did the best we could. That's Great. it. Thank you. Uh, Claudia? So um, I've been in this, <laughs> I've been in this neighborhood council for about four years now. And uh, as a, um, I've, I've served as co-chair. I've served as co-chair for three committees, um, Urban Needs under Wendell. I served as co-chair for government liaison and uh, which is another story, but um, never got the chance to actually be chair um, and somebody pointed out to me that the things that I have been doing and within the neighborhood council and within my private capacity were already the duties of a outreach chair. Um, you, you know, bringing out together with Wendell um, and Ceci, we brought 400 people out to, to the Skid Row job fair. Most of credit to Wendell, you know, but, um, and uh, with the, the uh, historic course small business symposium, I also feel like I have been engaging all constituents from every single district. I have been on uh, reach out to uh, house folks in Skid Row. 
Um, and I also reach out to business owners, small business owners. I'm a super big advocate of that um, community. But most of all, I would like to say and point out that during my four years, I've seen the outreach chair never take it to its full potential. Meaning we've never acquired data. We've never used a proper strategy, which any company trying to reach as many people as possible has would do. Uh, we've never had a uh, campaign and we've, we've never had a, a, an afterwards analysis to see what is it that we could do better. I think it's embarrassing that at some points we had committees that couldn't meet because they didn't have enough members. And I feel that as an outreach chair, we have to worry not just about growing our email list, but if we see the committees are not doing well, it's our job to support them reach out to as many community, community members to fill up those positions. I also am pledging to help uh, urban needs specifically with uh, all the outreach support that they need. I mean, we've had a table at the Skid Row uh, Festival for all artists that was empty. We paid for a table. No one called me to say like, can you please run to the office and grab some materials and go to the table? We don't have anybody to table it. I wasn't part of outreach, never knew that that was happening. But once I got to the festival, I realized that we didn't even have anybody. And I think that that's embarrassing. And I am committed, to, as I commit to everything else in my life, to change that, see where we're falling apart, not just within the outreach committee, but to support other committees with their outreach. Thank you so much. Great, great, thank you. Um... So I'd like to open it up for, for the board, for the board, if you have any comments, questions for the nominees. Was Pablo able to speak? I, I don't think I heard. Hi. Yeah, you started off. Uh, Melinda? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I've been very quiet, I know. Um, I actually think Claudia would be great for this because when we were, when we were campaigning and walking around downtown, um, it was easy because most people already knew her by face or by first name. And I was impressed by the fact that um, almost every single person who was either pushing a shopping cart or coming out of their SRO or just coming out for coffee said, hey, Claudia. And she responded, hey, so-and-so by first name. How is this? How is that? And she remembers people and knows people in the community already. And Everywhere we went, it, if I said, oh, there's this guy I'm giving a sandwich to, she goes, oh, so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah. And she knows, she says she knows her constituents, and I thought she was kidding, but I come to realize that was true. So I actually, I vote for Claudia. Okay, great. Uh, so Yehan, go, go ahead. Uh, yes, I too, um, like Melinda, can personally attest that Claudia would be great for the position because I've seen her uh, regularly doing outreach. And like uh, Melinda said, she does know the constituents. Um, I've seen that personally. Um, not saying that anyone else wouldn't be good for the position, but I'm just um, advocating for her just because I know that she'd be good for it personally. Okay, uh, thank you. And next, I see Tony. Um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm going to support Claudia and the and the reason. And by the way, I want to say I really appreciate um, uh, both of you, uh, all of you, coming forward and and throwing your hat in the ring. I think that's really great that you know everyone really wants the job um, and is willing to get behind it. Um, I, I, one reason why I want to support Claudia is because she has started a project called the uh, Historic Core Business Symposium, which was a tremendous success. Um, uh, when we did it a few years ago before COVID. And I wish we could have done it last year, but unfortunately, because of the situation we had, um, she wasn't able to continue that, that program. But it, um, I think that particular program in, in particular, in light of COVID, is, is going to be immensely important to rebuilding our community, uh, especially our small businesses. So uh, I really want to get behind her so that she can grow that project or any project like that and really, um, uh, really make it a success. And and and, and just like uh, Melinda had just said, I've been out with Claudia, you know, I'm with all members of the community and with Claudia out in the community talking with other community members. 
and I'll, we'll be walking to go to dinner or something like that. And she'll stop and talk to a constituent for like 10 minutes. I'm like, Claudia, we've got to go. We've got to go to dinner. We've got a dinner appointment. But, you know, she's focused on she's focused right on those on those constituents. Uh, and I, I really that's one of the things I really love about her. So um, I just wanted to mention that. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, see, Ryan, go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I guess echoing what the last few people have said, um, I, I unfortunately because of COVID and obviously this is a new board, I haven't had the chance to to you know get to know Pablo on a personal level or James on a personal level. Um, so I have no point of comparison. But all I can speak to is uh, you know what I love about Claudia as well is when I first joined the board about five years ago, she made a point to search me out, grab coffee with me, get to know me learn about my ideas, tell me about some of her ideas. I think she does a good job of not only engaging outside of the board, but also engaging within the board. Um, and I think an important thing within outreach is not to have all the people that you agree with constantly come and support things that you agree with. I think it's you know, important, uh, and she does a good job of it, is to get a variety of opinions from a variety of pockets of constituents. Um, and that's really what we need. When we talk about the vote count that was so low, we talk about, you know, a lot of people have issues with the outreach that we've done. I think um, a big part of it is, you know, people are going after their people. And I think Claudia does a good job of, you know, going outside of that. So. Uh, Michelle? Thank you. Uh, I am really proud and excited to uh, give my support to Pablo for this position. Um, I've got to see how he works firsthand over the last few months and um, running for this seat, uh, oftentimes uh, prioritizing accessibility, uh -huh. inclusion, and equity amongst, sorry, there's a bug in my face, amongst um, the folks that we were engaging with within our community. Pablo has also taken front and center um, within, within our community, engaging employees of downtown businesses, as well as renters, um, not just landlords and business owners, which I think is a very, very valuable demographic within our community that's oftentimes overlooked. And I am very excited and proud to put my vote behind Pablo tonight. Thank you. Uh, Kevin? Uh, yes, I too also wanted to lend my enthusiastic support to Pablo's nomination. Um, he really has a strong history of working with the community, um, including communities that have been disproportionately and historically underserved by D-Link. Um, you know, he's also has a very, I think, clear vision for um, kind of the procedural things that we can do to make D-Link more transparent and accessible, both from like a language justice perspective, but also just a uh, like easy to navigate perspective. So I think he has a holistic view that will be really um, helpful in us navigating a better outreach strategy so that we can reach more of the constituents of downtown LA. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other board member comments before I move to the public? I see none. So I'll move over to the public for those who would like to make a public comment for the uh, Vice President of uh, uh, Outreach and Communications uh, nominations, uh, press the raise hand button or star nine if you called in. Uh, you'll have one minute to speak. Uh, I'll call everyone in the order that they raise your hands on. Uh, okay, so we'll start off with uh, Josh, go ahead. Yeah, you can unmute. Hi, my name is Josh, 19 years in downtown Los Angeles. Um, I think the proof is in the pudding here. This is an outreach position and uh, she's got 142 people who voted for her. She did some outreach, it worked. Uh, I think Pablo had 46 and James had 17. Now everyone in the community knows and loves James. So I don't know why that's so low, um, but uh, I, I think this is a strict data thing here, right, right here. She's proven she can do outreach and, you know, I see her talking to people on my block, uh, homeless people know her by name, she knows their names, um, and, and she's willing to stop and, and talk to them and, and address their concerns. Business owners know her name. Um, she's active in our community. She's perfect for outreach. I, I don't think this is a, this is a no brainer. It's gotta be Claudia for outreach. Great, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, next, that's Peter, go ahead. Mute. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I served with Pablo on the outreach committee, um, both as unelected stakeholders. Um, you know, it's something that he was interested in long before um, he got on this board. Um, and something that, you know, I sort of went on the journey with him of being, you know, 
finding these really frustrating problems with the way that DLANC was run. Um, and I would really encourage you all to consider his candidacy. Um, you know, in working with him, you know, we've developed like very concrete ideas to, to fix these problems. Um, and very specifically, you know, in considering people who've been on the board in the past, just know that like those people have voted to limit the ability of stakeholders to submit agenda items through public comment. They voted to keep in place documentation requirements that made it really, really hard to get people to vote in these past elections, right? So I really encourage you to, to, to focus on someone who has look, tried to do this work for a while and is not all of a sudden sort of coming to a realization that it's a problem. It's been a problem for four years. It's been a problem longer than that. Um, and so for people who've prioritized that work, um, I think that's a place to start. Okay, uh, next is uh, Jessa. Jessa, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I wouldn't um, use neighborhood council data as a guiding star for anything. I, frankly, it's embarrassing that the numbers are so low. Um, and I don't find it impressive that Claudia got more votes. Like the whole system is um, honestly not what it needs to be. Um, I have been really impressed with Pablo's work um, and I would love to see him in this position. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jamie, go ahead, uh, unmute. Hi, thank you. Um, Jamie, again, I uh, work in the fashion district. Um, I just, yeah, I, I didn't know about the neighborhood council um, except for Pablo. Um, I'd never even heard about it before. Uh, I, I have to thank Pablo for that. I mean, if we're going to look at getting a new president, then I got to say the way outreach has been, has been struggling. So like, let's get someone in charge and, and seat them that can take this thing in the direction and reach out to new people because we need more people to engage in this system. So I would say Pablo's an obvious choice. Although, I mean, I wouldn't even know about the neighborhood council system without him. And I'm excited to think about the prospect of having someone like Pablo in the seat to reach out to you know, new people. Um, so yeah, I, I really enthusiastically hope that y'all will consider uh, putting someone that's been dedicated to this into the driver's seat. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Ceci, go ahead, uh, go ahead and unmute. Hi, my name is Ceci, and um, I uh, just wanted to, to advocate for Claudia. Uh, Claudia and I worked together on the Skid Row job fair, and we did get um, 400, some, uh, 400 or so people to come. And um, we, I, I helped her with the um, symposium in a very small, small way. And one of the things I love about the way Claudia works is she's very diligent. She, when she puts her attention on something, she looks, she gets She's a strategic person, um, and, uh, and, and I think if she were put on the task of outreach, which I think is the most important thing that you guys should all be part of, and I hope James and Pablo, I think you form a team, a triumvirate, to really prioritize this and engage the community, um, um, and I think Claudia would just be a really great leader, inclusive, and you would have fun working with her. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Michael. Go ahead. Yes, uh, this is Michael. I am uh, calling to advocate for Claudia. Uh, Claudia has the relationships necessary. She's going to bring, bring a fresh perspective to this position. Uh, we need better outreach. Um, with DLANC and she uh, is very focused on that. I also think that uh, she is very good with respect to public private partnerships, which are going to be very instrumental in us, especially to help our businesses that are struggling right now and to bring greater awareness to the community. So I encourage you to uh, vote for Claudia for outreach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is uh, Ryan, go ahead. Yes. Hi there. Uh, Rion here. Most of you guys know me. Uh, just wanted to um, 
just say I think Claudia is an amazing person for this role and I hope that everybody supports her nomination. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, next is uh, Kate. Go ahead and mute. Hi, um, I just wanted to encourage you all to vote for Pablo. <laughs> Um, I wanted to say that outreach outreach isn't just about knowing people, it's also about being able to actually bring those people into the process and get them interested, engaged in what the neighborhood council is doing. And uh, during the campaign and during his time on the outreach committee beforehand, Pablo's done a great job of reaching out to people who aren't usually engaged in politics. And he has ideas about how to really bring those people in, um, like making voting easier and the process is more transparent so that everyone feels equally able to engage. Um, he has ideas about how to work with community organizations and other neighborhood councils across the city to work for all of our collective goals. And I think that's very valuable and um, I would encourage you all to vote for him. Thank you. Uh, uh, Nisha, go ahead, unmute. Hi there. Um, so I just want to echo what's been said about not using voting data um, as a metric for outreach. There are tens of thousands of stakeholders in downtown LA, and it's the out the out the people that came out to vote was abysmally low. I had many reports of people I know that tried voting for the first time in this election and just couldn't, even after calling LA City, the city clerk's office multiple times. Um, I've been a stakeholder on and off over the years without knowing it, most recently as an employee downtown for the last three and a half years, overlapping with Claudia's tenure, and I did not know that I was a downtown LA stakeholder until a non-dealing stakeholder told me. I've seen Pablo in the street, and he is... He listens to people. He actually actively listens to what they have to say without an agenda. He wants to hear them and he wants to share information. I've seen him do this with others and experienced that myself and just want to wholeheartedly echo the court for Pablo and also mention that a theme on this, the theme today has been change. And I think true change is actually supporting somebody who has new and fresh ideas um, for, this, for this position. Thank you. All right, uh, Evan, go ahead and unmute. Hey there, my name is Evan. Uh, I'm here to throw my support behind Pablo. I also want to say that voting data should not be used to um, measure outreach. Uh, and Claudia actively blocks dissenting voices on her own social media platforms. Um, therefore, that has nothing to do with outreach. In fact, that is discouraging particip participation in our neighborhood council and everyone should vote for Pablo. All right, thank you. Uh, Next is uh, Kevin, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I wanna echo the sentiments uh, in support of Pablo. Um, he's done the hard work of outreach to renters and tenants. And I think you know, those are some of the hardest people to engage in the political process. Um, it's one thing to uh, engage with business owners. You know, they're typically active and easier to get to, but I've seen Pablo work really hard at um, engaging with the most disenfranchised people in our community. Um, bottom line is we need change in D-Link. And I don't think that anybody who uh, is an incumbent uh, should remain in any, uh, or, or retain any position of leadership on this board. I think um, people have clearly uh, advocated for change on this board and having fresh faces as, as the outreach position, which is, that's something D-Link has desperately lacked uh, is really, really important. All right, thank you. Uh, next is uh, Austin, go ahead and unmute. Hi, uh, my name's Austin. I am uh, speaking in support of Pablo. Uh, I was on the slate with Pablo during this last election. And one of the things that I most valued about him was the way that he worked reached out to workers specifically. Uh, one of the things that we need to be supporting during all of this is not just the residents of this area or the people who are owners of real estate in this area, but the people who work in this area. And I think that Pablo has a brilliant idea of including all of these people, uh, all of these people going forward as we're engaging the electorate. And I think all of us should be thinking about him deeply as we're considering that. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Next is uh, Sean, go ahead. 
Yeah, hi there. I just want to be an echo of an echo chamber. Just kidding. Um, I actually, I'm here to support Claudia and um, I think she has the votes and we should stop trying to make fetch happen. Um, you know, Claudia is uh, such a huge part of this community. You know, she didn't just like appear three months ago. She's been here for years and she's so engaged in this community. And so um, that's it, you know, stop trying to make it happen. Apparently Pablo was part of outreach for maybe three or four months and didn't like serve all the way through. So there you go. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so that's it for public comment. Now I'll just move over to the vote for vote action. Uh, we're gonna do a roll call vote. Uh, so as a call out the board members, please uh, let me know uh, which of the three uh, uh, nominees uh, you'll be voting for. Uh, if you're voting for none uh, and you like to abstain, just make just uh, say that you're abstaining. Uh, and all right, so start off with Claudia. I vote for myself, Jose. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tony? Claudia. Patty? James. James. Okay. Uh, Michelle? Pablo. Pablo. Okay. Uh, Wendell? Uh, Claudia. I'm sorry. Uh, can you say that one more time? Claudia. Claudia. Got it. Okay. Uh, Naria? Claudia. All right, uh, Rick. <clears throat> Claudia. Ryan. Claudia. Okay, uh, Lori. Claudia. Okay, uh, Michael. I think his connection died. Okay, so absent. Okay, uh, Tyler. Claudia. Okay, uh, Kevin. Pablo. All right, Melinda. Claudia. Okay, uh, Pablo. <laughs> Me. Okay. Uh, Alan. Claudia. Ebony? Claudia. Cody? Claudia. Okay, uh, Jim? Claudia. Debbie? Claudia. James? Claudia. James, okay. Uh, uh, Yehan? Claudia. Claudia, okay. So, one. So 16 votes for Claudia and come here. Yeah. And one for James. So congratulations, Claudia, and uh, being vice president for outreach and communications. Thank you guys. The first thing I want to say, sorry, Jose, to interrupt is please reach out. Let's get this going. Pablo, love to work with you. James, let's go. Let's do this. Let's get together and get some stuff done. Thank you. You better do a good job, truck. Thanks, truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next item on the agenda for the uh, of officers is the treasurer. Is there an, uh, well, actually before? Uh, as for nominations, so uh, I'll, I'll read out the, the duties and powers of the treasurer. Uh, the treasurer shall chair the budget and finance committee. The treasurer shall oversee the finance of DLANC to assure total compliance with all Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and the Los Angeles okay. oh, oh. requirements in general.
perform all duties incident to the office of treasurer and such other duties as may be assigned by the board. The treasurer shall provide at each meeting of the board and at such other times as the board may request a written account of the finances of DLANC MERs uh, for board uh, approval. The treasurer will also report the details of the budget versus the act, uh, versus actual expenditures for the fiscal year. So those are the duties and powers that's listed on the uh, DLANC's bylaws. So is there any nominations for treasurer? Uh, Ryan? I'll nominate Tony. All right, nominate Tony. Uh, Tony, do you accept the nomination? I do, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I see uh, Rick, do you have a, a different nomination? <laughs> no, I was gonna nominate Tony. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, Naira? Yeah, me too. He did okay. a great job. Great, uh, any other uh, nominations? Uh, for just checking, I uh, see none. So, uh, you know, can someone like, uh, would someone like to make the motion to appoint uh, the treasurer of downtown Los Angeles uh, the nomination for Tony? I'll make the motion, Ryan. All right, uh, Ryan makes the motion. Who seconds? Second, Claudia. Uh, second. Or Wendell seconds. Huh? Wendell, Wendell seconded. Okay, got it. The, uh, Tony, do you have a, would like to make a statement for the board? Sure. Um, thank you all for, for your nominations. I really appreciate that, that vote of confidence. Um, it's a very unsexy, thankless job being treasurer, let me tell you. Uh, but it's very important. And um, I think that over the last two years, we've really gotten things straightened out with our finances. And I really, you know, look forward to working with you um, if, I'm, uh, if I'm elected to, uh, to continue that job. I really appreciate it. Great. Uh, any comments from the board? Just do a good job. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll move over to the public. Uh, for a public comment, press the raise hand button on your screen and I'll call everyone in the order that you raise your hands. For those that call in, that'll be star nine in order to raise your hand so I can call upon you. Uh, start off with uh, Oh, just a sec, give me a sec to get the timer. Uh, right, so we'll start off with Peter. Go ahead and unmute. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I, I just want to say that I think it's really troubling to see Tony Hoover nominated to a position of power within this board. Um, there's a very specific uh, issue that I think ought to be raised. Um, after a social justice protest last summer where a man in a wheelchair was thrown to the ground, Tony posted on Facebook, quote, this was a staged protest by hired activists specifically to get this on social media with the intent to frame police officers. That is Tony Hoover. That is a lie. It's a dangerous lie. It's Alex Jones-esque false flag language. I think it has no place on this board, frankly, no place in our community. Um, and I think especially elevating someone like Tony with that kind of dangerous view um, speaks terribly about this board. Um, he will be deciding what agenda items go on the agenda. He will be deciding who chairs committees. Um, and we're talking about someone who is clearly just comfortable as a board member at this time, spreading lies about people protesting for black lives in our community. Um, you oversee the civic core of Los Angeles. It's imperative that you protect the first. Uh, people, city council, go ahead and unmute. Hi, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I want to oppose uh, Tony Hoover's nomination for executive committee. Uh, this fucking freak, Tony, uh, you know, posting on Facebook saying that protesters were, were hired, uh, you know, specifically to get on social media with the intent to frame police officers. You know, he, he's a few sentences away from, you know, saying protesters get uh george soros money uh you know this this is someone who who talks like alex jones um you know it, it is completely unacceptable for someone 
with that kind of view to be elevated to a higher position on this board. He cannot be one of the people who decides on agenda items for the board. You know, elevating him is accepting and improving of his viewpoint, you know, and, you know, would you be accepting of Alex Jones if he was running for the board? I don't think so. Imagine what he is saying in private if he feels comfortable posting this. All right, next is uh, Jessa, go ahead. I'm you. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm also pretty troubled and very disappointed that there's no opposition um, for this position. I myself have had some social media interactions. Um, what you got to understand is that that type of rhetoric, the whole narrative of paid protesters um, has its roots in anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Um, and I don't know if Tony is aware of that, um, but it's well documented. And as a Jewish resident, um, I find it deeply, deeply disturbing. Um, and it's very, very sad that there's no opposition. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is uh, Jamie. Go ahead and unmute. Jamie, uh, unmute. No? Uh, okay, uh, Kevin, go ahead and, and unmute. Thank you. Um, yeah. As others have touched on, uh, Tony Hoover's social media posts alone are disqualifying for any leadership position on this board. Um, the idea of, you know, activists being hired and, and for pay is is a disgusting right wing trope. As somebody else mentioned, is actually anti Semitic. Um, I've never been paid for a protest I've gone to, so I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but Tony's not a man with any integrity. Um, in fact. He, if he had any integrity, he would have stepped down when he uh, his office no longer was located in OUE Sky Space downtown LA. Um, Tony's not even actually a stakeholder, uh, which renders him ineligible not only to you know sit on this board but to uh, vote or hold any uh, position within this board. So uh, he should have resigned at that point, but the second best time to resign is now. Um, it's disappointing that no one else is able to run, but it was. Uh, time's up. Thank you. Jose, I'm sorry. Um, I want to interject and, and, and interrupt for, for the sake. I'm, I just want to, from moving forward, we're going to be frankly here. And I'm going to be forward um, and say that I, I know Tony personally. Not only that, but I was assistant to the rabbi. I ran a Chabad. And to hear Tony's Wait, name. Can I call point of order? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, Claudia, just, this is not for public comment. I don't believe you can respond to public comment right now. Yeah, at this time it's just- so I'm, be, I'm, I'm definitely point of order taken. I'm definitely being interrupted from speaking. So we know that listening is not what we're doing here. Thank you so point much. Point of order. This is a violation of the Brown Act, Claudia. You oh, aren't sorry. supposed to respond to public comment. Uh, I'll continue with the uh, Anthony, I mean, Antonio. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Uh, Antonio? Uh, Antonio, uh, you can unmute. <laughs> oh my God, Claudia, I'm so fucking laughing. You shouldn't have done that. You're trying to give a comment and you're here doing a a stand-up set in the middle of a neighborhood council meeting. That's not fair to us. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> Antonio. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, Antonio. Uh, just to first, I'll uh, just stop the time just to make sure you keep going. But I'd, I'd just like to remind you to uh, stay on topic, which is the appointment of the treasurer. Uh, if you can just uh, focus on, on the on the item itself. Go ahead. And uh, um, unmute. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Tony Hoover, not a good representative of this district. 
uh, of this table. I'm sorry, man. That shit was funny. Come on, dude. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Yes. That's it. Okay. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, next person, uh, Ms. Eastwood, go ahead. Unmute. Hi there. Um, I would also like to voice my opposition. Um, to Tony Hoover's nomination for treasurer. Um, I think everyone else who voiced their disappointment, um, I'm echoing that. I, I don't think Mr. Hoover has any ongoing um, physical presence in DTLA as a resident or um, his employment not being in DTLA. Um, if Mr. Hoover gets appointed to treasurer, um, I know many constituents, including myself, will be watching very carefully um, and I don't think anyone cares um, how good of friends Claudia is with Tony or how many Jewish people she's worked with into this um, issue or his appointment. Um, and it's disappointing to see no one else running. So we'll just be watching you. Right, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, Sean, go ahead on mute. Yeah, hi. Um, I like to be referred to as them, their, or they. And I have a personal point of privilege. And um, I think that there's other people that could have stepped up, maybe Sh Michelle or Kevin or Pablo for this position. But, you know, none of them have. And, and so um, Peter Clown and the Clown Car you know, is just a little echo chamber right now. And so, but thank you for like, thank you for being clowns. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, all right, Kate, go ahead, uh, unmute. Hi, I just wanna echo, echo what a few other people have said. Um, as far as I'm aware, Tony is not actually a downtown stakeholder at the moment. And um, that alone should disqualify him not only from any board seat, but from being on this council at all, or even participating in meetings. Um, and I think that is something that needs to be addressed before you appoint him to a position like this. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. And all right, uh, people, city council, go ahead, unmute. Yeah, no, Claudia, please do not interrupt during public comments. Uh, it's a clear Brown Act violation. Come on. How, how many times have we got to go through this? Uh, it's, it's embarrassing for your colleagues. You all violate the Brown Act. Come on, guys. Get it. Get it together. One time. Just once. Hold it together. One time. Thank you. Good night. Okay, uh, Nisha, go ahead. Unmute. Hi, yeah. Um, I, I also want to echo concerns that if Tony is not currently a stakeholder and doesn't work or reside or own a business um, in downtown LA, that it's premature to vote on him. Um, also, a treasurer, someone who manages public finance, um, requires the highest level of ethics. And I have also seen some of Tony's comments online um, and been concerned about the lack of um, seeming fact in them, including a comment about how DSA is trying to um, have public domain over hotels, which isn't even possible. Only the government can engage in public domain. I'm just very concerned. And also as a stakeholder, I wanna echo that I will be keeping a close eye on um, the work um, that the treasurer is doing should Tony get nominated, uh, get voted in, um, and I encourage the rest of the board to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Gary. Go ahead. Unmute. Hi, I'm just, um, I just wanted to comment on it. I'm a little, uh, I guess, dismayed at the groups calling in uh, that, that seem to have a political agenda. They're all part of the same group and they swarm these meetings. And I think it's better, uh, I'm, I'm more inspired by people that have an agenda that it's more just, they care about the community. And I think that's Tony. And I think he's here all the time. He's running tours. He knows everything about downtown. If he says something that's not factual, that's a matter of fact. It doesn't mean 
he's related to Hitler because he has a mustache or whatever other connections you want to make. It's just ridiculous. And I just wanted to make a statement. Uh, thank you. Um, next is uh, Sophia. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Hi, my name is Sophia Lee. I use she, they pronouns, um, and I work downtown in financial district. I, I want to echo concerns about Tony's nomination for any executive committee um, position. Tony's comments online and his I mean, it's especially concerning that he may not even be eligible to serve on the neighborhood council, but his comments online are especially concerning. Um, you know, I have witnessed police violence myself um, and the, the, the pro-cop nature of his comments honestly do concern me because the stakeholders that I'm concerned with downtown are the people who are unhoused, people who most frequently face harassment from police. And I don't really trust that Tony is able to um, serve the interests of all constituents of downtown. So just want to echo those concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make a point of order? Uh, not responding to anybody, Jose. Um, uh, to, I'm, I'm just asking if this is allowed in the Brown Act. Feel free to stop me if I'm saying something incorrect. Didn't we already reconcile people's eligibility when people were registering to run as a candidate? Uh, right, right now, that's uh, that. That was a city clerk who handled the qualifications of the board members who ran for for the neighbor council. Uh, if there is a questioning of a board member's qualifications, there is a process to to go about it, uh, but it's not going to be done at this time. Uh, Thank you. The department will look into it. Um, okay, I'm um, sorry, Wendell, it, it, like you can press star six to unmute. I, I accidentally uh, uh, muted you. Um, all right, so let me just get back to, to this. Uh, uh, okay, so Sean, go ahead. Yeah, hi there. Um, you know, just like how um, we have to prove our eligibility to run as a candidate, it seems like we have a lot of faceless people that say they're a stakeholder, but then, you know, do you really live downtown? Do you work downtown? I'm Nisha, you're a federal prosecutor, and you said that, uh, you know, when you're running, that uh, you didn't see any, uh, pros like any lawsuits coming from uh, seizing the hotels. And that was a really surprising uh, comment. Um, I think that um, this is a coordinated attack and it's uh, not cool. And like, you know, you guys can like put forward a candidate to be treasurer. You have a few to choose from and you didn't do it. So get over it. Right, uh, thank you for your comments. And last is uh, Brian. Or, uh, sorry, have I, have I mispronounced it? Uh, no worries, Jose. I just wanted to say, I know some neighborhood councils uh, have time limits for their public comments on their agenda items. This is, as you know, this happens with all neighborhood councils, especially in this last in recent year. So I just wanna throw that reminder because I know we have other pressing issues for this board to take on. So that would be my public comment. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that's it for public comments. Uh, we'll move over to the board uh, vote. Uh, for the treasurer, which is uh, Tony. So I'll do the roll call vote. I'll start off, uh, Claudia. Uh, Claudia, you're, you're a view. I'm voting yes to keep Tony as treasurer. It's a really difficult job and he's been able to point out where we could be spending our money better just as much as controller Galprin. I also want to say that I- Claudia, no, no comments. We're just voting right now. Yeah. Just vote. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right, Tony. Yeah. I said it was thankless. Um, I vote for myself. Okay, uh, Patty. Patty? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry, I had trouble unmuting. I'm going to abstain on this. Abstain, okay. Uh, Michelle? I will be abstaining from this vote today. Abstain as well. Okay. Uh, Window? I'm abstaining, please. Abstaining. Okay. Uh, Naira? Tony? 
Okay, uh, Rick. Uh, uh, Richard. Tony. Okay. Uh, Ryan. Tony. Lori. Yes. Okay. Uh, Michael. Michael still out, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Tyler. Yes, for Tony. Okay, uh, Kevin. Abstention. Staining, okay. Uh, Melinda. Sorry, uh, Tony. Okay, uh, Pablo. I abstain. Okay. Ellen. Tony. Okay. Epony. Uh, Epony. Oh, uh, abstaining. Abstaining. Okay. Uh, Cody. Tony. All right. Uh, Jim. Tony. Okay, uh, Debbie. Tony. Okay, uh, James. Tony. And Jehan. Tony. Okay, uh, so it's two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, fourteen. Uh, in favor. Uh, zero opposed and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven abstentions. Uh, motion passes. Congratulations, uh, Tony, Dean Treasurer. Uh, next item on the agenda is the secretary. Again, for the secretary, the duties and powers for the secretary shall be responsible for keeping a record of all proceedings, correspondence, documents, and board meeting attendance shall be responsible for keeping and posting minutes of all board and executive committee meetings and shall maintain a current roster of directors and alternates. The secretary shall also be the officer of service for grievances and the California Public Record Act request. Maintaining a roster and, <laughs> and reconcile it with, uh, with Empower LA roster. If the board hires a minute taker, the secretary is responsible for coordinating with the note taker and ensuring that the minutes are properly prepared. Uh, so that's the duties and powers of the secretary. Is there a nomination for uh, from the board? Yeah, Patty. Wendell nominates Patty. Wendell nominates from. Patty? Yes. All right, Patty, do you accept the nomination? No, I do not. So that's a no for, for Patty. Claudia, do you have a nomination for a secretary? Um, I just want to say as past secretary that I'm here for whoever wants to try. I will help you get acquainted and do a, a good transition of power. You're going to be really good at it. It's, it, I just, I hope that somebody really uh, tries to be secretary. I had a lot of fun. I got to know a lot of people and talk to a lot of constituents. So if you want to nominate yourself, I am here for you. I will send you all the documents and I'll, I'll hold your hand until you feel comfortable. All right, uh, see uh, Ryan's hand. Go ahead, Ryan. I don't want to nominate anyone. Can I just make a, a general comment? Um, we've heard a lot about getting some new blood. I know it's not the sexiest position. Uh, if somebody knew who's... So far, we have all incumbents who are in, uh, in the executive committee. If somebody new would like to take a stab at it, I would definitely be open to that. Okay, uh, Kevin? Yeah, so I'd like to nominate Michelle. Okay, Kevin nominates Michelle. Uh, Michelle, do you accept the nomination? I do. Thank you, Kevin. All right, uh, Michelle accepts. Any other nominations? Uh, Naira? I like to nominate James Wilde. And Myra nominates uh, James. Uh, James, do you accept the nomination? 
Could you repeat the duties? Uh, sure. So, hold on. Uh, so the duties shall be the for the secretary shall be responsible for keeping a record of all proceedings, correspondence, and do documents and board meeting attendance. Shall be responsible for keeping and posting minutes for all board and executive committee meetings, and shall be uh, and shall maintain a current roster of directors and alternates. The secretary shall also be the officer of service for grievances and the uh, uh, California Public Records Act request, maintaining a roster and report and reconcile it with the entire roster. If the board hires a minute taker, the secretary is responsible for coordinating with the note taker and assuring that the minutes are properly prepared. I do not accept. Well, that's a note from James. Okay, so uh, Debbie? I nominate Pablo. Pablo? He wanted to uh, do outreach. This is also a equally as involving executive uh, office. So Pablo. Okay. Uh, so Pablo, do you accept the nomination? I do not. I'm going to throw my support behind Michelle. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Tony? No, I just I just wanted to, you actually clarified a point. I was just wanted to make a point that we have a note taker. So uh, the person responsible for secretary doesn't necessarily have to uh, record the uh, minutes of the meeting at the meeting. So I just want to make sure that was clear. Okay. Uh, Ryan? Just, just for the idea of variety, it sounds like everyone wants to have an opinion. Uh, I'd like to nominate Jim. Ryan nominates Jim. So uh, Jim, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I accept. Okay, Jim accepts. All right, so are there any other nominations from the board for the secretary? Seeing none, so uh, can I get a motion from the board uh, to appoint uh, Michelle or Jim to the secretary position for the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. Uh, Ryan. I do. Uh, all right. Uh, Wendell makes a motion. Who, who would like to second? I can second. Uh, this is Kevin. Oh, Kevin? Yeah. All right. Wendell. Second by Kevin. OK. Uh, so Michelle. Uh, Jim, oh, no, you'll have your time to, to make your comments. Uh, Michelle, go ahead. Thanks, Jose. Um, and hello, everyone. 9, 9 p.m. on a Tuesday. I hope we're all hanging in there. Um, I'm really excited to be nominated. I appreciate uh, the vote of confidence, Kevin um, and Pablo, for your support as well. Um, I can admit I have never formally held the role of secretary for a neighborhood council. Um, I'm currently the secretary for my HOA board um, here in downtown where I've been a resident for the last four years and it is a duty I take very seriously from the rule, rule following and procedures of it to also just bringing transparency and making sure that notes and documentation are accessible and readable for all that um, that need it. So um, I'm excited to bring that same level of support and engagement to D-Link and um, I would appreciate uh, your vote. Great, um, and then Jim. Sure, thanks everyone. And thank you to Ryan for nominating me. So I'm an architect and project manager. And one of my main things I do on a daily basis is take meeting minutes and manage people. And I have to be very transparent, very communicative, very open to everybody. I'm something I'm very used to on my daily work. I also run two different nonprofits, which also entail, uh, entail the same responsibilities. I've been doing this for many years uh, with different community groups. And I'm new to D-Link, but uh, the skills will translate, I'm sure, pretty easily into this neighborhood council. And I hope you vote for me. Great. Uh, all right. Any board member comments? Seeing none. Uh, we'll just vote. one comment. Oh, Brian? Uh, I'd like to just remind everybody, panelists, attendees, everybody. Right now, we're speaking about who should be secretary. Um, we're not speaking about, you know, people's political views. We're not speaking about minimum wage. We're not speaking about unionization. We're speaking about being secretary. 
everyone's opinions are valid. Let's try to be civil and let's try to be on topic. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, Kevin? Yes, um, I just wanted to speak a little bit about Michelle. Um, I know her to be just so incredibly diligent and really takes the role of secretary extremely seriously. Um, she is becoming increasingly familiar every single day um, with the bylaws and Brown Act. And, you know, she's making sure that um, she really wants to get the board on a track where we can be compliant with all of our um, legal duties and ethical obligations. And I think that that will help bring um, a lot of levity to the board that will be much needed. So I really think um, having her in this position would be a great asset to all of D-Lane. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for Michelle, sorry. Go ahead. Um, outside of the HOA, what experience do you have in terms of outreach and organization? Question, Melinda, thank you. Um, so in my time in LA, I have not been um, formally a part of any like I said, neighborhood councils outside of my HOA. Um, I'm not a formal uh, board member on anything. Um, I'm an active volunteer uh, within our community, within animal rescue space, uh, access to nature for underserved communities and veterans projects. Um, outside of that, and I wanna make sure I'm answering your question specifically, you said around outreach and engagement, correct? Or around the duties of the secretary? Uh, for, for outreach and, uh, well, not to, sorry, I'm. It's late. Um, <laughs> outreach and communication, as well as secretarial position uh, outside sure. of HOA. Sure. Um, and I want to make sure, Jose, that are we able to ask the same question of Jim, or is this where it's directed at me and I provide his comment? Yeah, uh, Jim. Uh, Jim can, has the opportunity to also uh, answer this, uh, answer the the questions as well. The question was related to the HOA. Is there? I'm oh, not sure how uh, to answer that. Well, and I, I guess, uh, Melinda, I want to make sure that we're both addressing your your concerns here. So um, at an overall level, I, oh, hold on one second, my AirPods just died. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. So from an HOA perspective, I currently serve as a secretary and have been for the last uh, one and a half years. And then bef outside of that, I'm also... Can you all hear me? Uh, yeah. Um, outside of that, I am also an avid volunteer within our community. Prior to that, I worked in parks and recreation for about six years uh, throughout youth athletics, adult athletics and sports, and did outreach and engagement within the unhoused community uh, in Seattle before I moved to LA about seven years ago. Um, so I'm definitely a, a community advocate and, and interactive person within our community, um, but I've not held formal uh, board roles. At Melinda, that was your, the crux of your question there outside of the HOA. Thank you. So, uh, Jim, anything? Sure. I mean, I, I'll just add a little bit of my experience just so I guess you can be familiar with what I've done. I mean, I, I'm currently serving on two different boards right now. Uh, the first board I've, I've been a part of for the past seven years, uh, we provide uh, design services to underserved communities around Los Angeles. We work with them to give them services that they otherwise wouldn't be able to afford. So I'm very used to um, outreach and working with people to give them a voice and give them um, services they don't typically have. The other one is I'm currently very active in uh, working with uh, uh, Broadway West, which is a nonprofit that uh, is aimed at revitalizing the Broadway Theater District. So I, I, you know, I have a real footing in downtown. I've been downtown for over 10 years. And um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a very detail-oriented, organized person. And I think that the, these, my skills from my previous board positions, current board positions would translate very well into this. Can I just add, I'm sorry, but now that my headphones are working and I'm not as frazzled, I just wanted to also mention professionally outside of the volunteer work that I do, I'm in my craft of recruiter. Um, I'm, I'm constantly in written communication with people adhering to both um, legal uh, laws, statewide, countrywide, and then also just within the, the company that I work for. So I'm very oriented around that space and comfortable um, navigating the complexities that come with that space as well. Cody? Yes, uh, actually, uh, Jim just mentioned uh, pretty much what I was going to say. Just uh, I'm, I'm throwing my support behind Jim here. Uh, we both ran for the uh, seats of South Park Business. Um, and through that, I, I had a conversation with him. And uh, I just want to point out his experience. Uh, he's on a couple of boards, as he, he mentioned. 
Uh, and I, I think he outlined it pretty well. So again, I'm supporting Jim on this one. Uh, Ryan? Yeah, I just wanted to make another comment sort of echoing my, my first kind of plea. Um, as Kevin so, uh, as Kevin said, as Pablo said, as you know, Peter and a few other uh, attendees have said, you know, it sounds like we want some new people in positions of power. I think Michelle is an incumbent. She's been on her board for a while. She's had a voice. Uh, I think Jim brings a fresh perspective, and I think that he, um, you know, represents South Park well. And I think that, uh, in the spirit of getting new people, and I think Jim is a great choice. So that's my. I, I'd like to offer a point of clarification. I've been an alternate on D-Link and attended approximately three meetings in the year and a half that I supported um, former board member Dan Kernow as a member of D-Link. I wouldn't say I was actively involved. I um, would. Well. All right. All right. Uh, so I, any other comments from the board? I'm gonna move over to public comment. So public comment, please raise your hand uh, or press star nine to, to raise your hand. Uh, okay, uh, so start off with uh, Josh. Go ahead and unmute. Hi there, yeah. In the interest of a real smooth transition from one secretary to the next, I encourage you to choose Jim. Um, uh, Michelle and uh, Kevin were putting up their posters in downtown Los Angeles and I was sitting at Spring for Coffee and they were joking right in front of Spring for Coffee how much of a bitch Claudia was, uh, how she did anyone, could they put their poster on top of hers and uh, did anyone have a Sharpie so that they could draw horns on her. So just strictly in the interest of a smooth transition, I definitely encourage you to choose uh, Jim uh, so that uh, Claudia doesn't have to work with someone who totally hates her. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Josh. Uh, next, uh, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, hi there. Um, I, you know, I think that we should give Michelle a chance. And I think that she can, um, you know, we're all watching. So if there's anything that doesn't go properly or smoothly, then, you know, there's like blowback. But I think that, you know, it's a good opportunity for her to like show up. She was already an alternate. And I think that this is a um, really a good opportunity for her to get more involved. That's it. Right, thank you. Uh, Antonio, go ahead, unmute. Um, yeah, I I would definitely encourage y'all to support Michelle. I think um, this this neighborhood council has clearly shown in the past how antagonistic it is to its own constituents, to its, its fellow members, and I don't think that should be a consideration at all when can, when um, picking new secretaries based on your own previous conduct. I think that's just picking and choosing behaviors based on who you support. Um, not a lot of good leadership comes from this council in the first place, but I think that, uh, you know, supporting Michelle could be a good step in that direction. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, Evan, go ahead, unmute. Hi there, my name is Evan, and I want to throw my full support behind Michelle. Um, she's actually the reason that I'm on this call today. She got me activated um, and got me even understanding what D-Lank was. Without her, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be a part of this uh, meeting. So Michelle has already proven her outreach has worked, even if I might be a pain in the ass of others in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kate, go ahead, unmute. Yeah, I also wanted to throw my support behind Michelle. Um, she definitely has the experience that she needs to be a secretary with her experience with the HOA and all of her work experience. And she is um, great at, you know, reaching out to the community and getting people involved, as Evan just said. Um, and I think she would be a great member of this executive committee. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Nisha, go ahead. You. Hi, uh, yes. Um, I also want to throw my uh, support behind Michelle. Um, it sounds like she has a lot of experience with doing secretary work. Um, I've served as secretary in orgs before and it's a lot of work, um, meticulous work. And it sounds like she's in a position where she's able to um, do that successfully. Um, I also wanna challenge the comment about Michelle saying things in the street. 
um, the times that our slate was in the street, uh, Michelle wasn't like, you know, Michelle was not present with us. So that's just slanderous and not true. So uh, really want to just check the, that misinformation. Um, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Kevin, go, uh, go ahead and unmute. Thanks. Yeah, um, I, I want to uh, fully support Michelle for secretary. Um, I know that as her role as the secretary of her HOA, um, she's very meticulous in that work. And I know that she can bring that uh, work to d -Link as well. Um, I also believe that if I'm not mistaken, uh, the secretary does deal with um, public record requests. And I think uh, that's something that's really important to a, a body that needs more transparency than it has had in the past. Um, you know, D-Link has, has not been known for its transparency. And so getting somebody in the in the secretary position that's able to, um, you know, fully comply with CPRA rules uh, is really key. Um, in addition, I, I don't know what that other uh, caller was uh, accusing Michelle of. That's, that's really odd because um, I was out there canvassing uh, on, on one particular day and Michelle was not, she was not able to make it. So that, that was just bizarre. So that's it. Thank you for coming. And uh, that's it for public comment. We'll move over for the board action. Uh, again, this is for uh, the appointment for the secretary for d -Lank. Uh Two nominees is uh, Michelle and Jim. So I'll do a roll call vote. Board members, please make sure to call out for which board member you're voting for. And uh, if you're abstaining, please make sure to state that you're abstaining. Uh, Claudia? Jim. Jim, okay. Uh, Tony? I'm abstaining since I'm on the executive committee. Okay. Uh, uh, Patty? Jim. Jim, okay. Michelle? I vote for myself. Okay. Uh, Wendell? Michelle. Okay. Uh, Naria? Jim. Jim, okay. Uh, Richard? Michelle. Okay. Uh, Ryan? Jim. Jim, okay. Uh, Lori? Michelle. Michelle, okay. Uh, Michael's not back anymore, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, Tyler? Uh, abstain. Abstain, okay. Uh, Kevin? Michelle. No, I okay. Melinda? I vote for Jim. Okay. Uh, Pablo? Michelle. Okay. Uh, Ellen? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Uh, Tiffany? Jim. Jim, okay. Cody? Jim. Jim, all right. Uh, Jim? Myself, please. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Debbie? Michelle. Okay, uh, James? Michelle. Uh, Jehan? Jim. Jim, okay. Nine votes for Jim. Eight votes for Michelle. And there are one. to three abstentions. So congratulations, Jim, got the secretary uh, executive position. <clears throat> Thanks to everyone who voted for me and for everyone who didn't as well. Look, looking forward to working with all of you. Yeah, uh, at this time, so now uh, I'll hand it over to the president. Uh, so Richard, uh, you can proceed for the rest of the board meeting that's on the agenda. I'm 
going to ask that we uh, make some adjustments on the agenda with the approval of the board. <clears throat> uh, Jose, you're going to keep running the, uh, the Zoom here for us or uh, Naira yeah. in control since I don't. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there, was a, there was a point of order that I made earlier that uh, general comment should happen at the beginning of the meeting. And given our uh, process with the election, uh, it was postponed, but I still symbolically want to allocate 10 minutes for anyone who has a general comment, two minutes max. Uh, Jose, can you see who's interested in uh, speaking? Yeah, all right, um, I'll call them out. So, uh, see, so yeah, Peter, Peter, go ahead and unmute. After two minutes. Sorry, my, my hand was actually raised from earlier, uh, oh. but I'll, I'm happy to give a quick public comment. Um, excited to see a lot of changes on this board um, and looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys can work on in the future. Um, best of luck to everyone. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next is Nick. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Hello. Um, hi, so I am a relatively new. Uh, resident in downtown. I'm happy to see things going on this board. I've only been listening in for a couple of months. Um, I do want to point out that it was un it was strangely difficult uh, to register to vote. There was a, it was easier for me to Google and find a different website than D-Link to do it. So it's just something I'd like to point out. Um, otherwise, I would just like to say how uh, fantastic I thought that Luminex event was the last week. And I really hope that this board can consider um, pitching for future events like this, hosting them, or just trying to bring them in and trying to engage local businesses. I really think that would be a great way to energize the neighborhood in the year moving forward. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Guadalupe, go ahead, unmute. You have two minutes. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Guadalupe Garcia. I am the program manager at the Taylor Board Program uh, with ITEPSCA, which is a nonprofit organization. We have a day labor center in the downtown fashion district area. So excited about like working with you, collaborate, collaborating with you. We provide support focusing on employment assistance to day laborers and household workers. And of course, during this pandemic, um, we assist the more marginalized communities. A lot of our members are homeless or are facing um, the risk to become homeless. And of course, a lot of like employment um, uh, issues and challenges they have been facing. We are providing weekly distributions. We have our coordinator, Carlos Yanez, joining these monthly meetings with you. He wasn't able to join today. Um, and yeah, looking forward to work with you. We also do a lot of work regarding workers' rights and in providing information, not just in services, not just to day laborers, but also other community members in the downtown fashion district. So hopefully we can. Um, we're still joining your meetings and looking forward to work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Guadalupe. All right, next is uh, Catherine. Go ahead and unmute. Hey, this is uh, Catherine McNenny again, Skid Row stakeholder. I have an issue with the Zoom meeting. Um, I don't know if it's only on my end, but I'm requesting someone look into the fact that I can't, all the people that, all the board, new, newly elected board members that I could see on the call at the beginning of the meeting, I can't see all of them now. Specifically, Patty Berman. Um, I, I heard her, but I can't see her anywhere and I can't see her name. And I, De, Michael Delajani as well. So it's really important for stakeholders, members of the public, to be able to see if quorum has been lost and who is still in the meeting. So there's some, maybe there's something you need to adjust with the Zoom, but uh, we need to be able to see who's who's left the meeting and who's still on the call. I can't. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Catherine. I'll, that's on my list from these public comments. So let me. Can, uh, can I make a point of order, Rick? Yeah. Uh, there, there are a few people, many people, um, as the as the uh, 
the person just mentioned, Catherine, I believe, um, who don't have access to computers. A lot of people are calling in. Based on that, you cannot have videos. Having just just as a as an, you know a point of detail, but definitely hear your concerns. Thank you, Ryan. Well, thank you, Catherine. Okay, uh, so thank you, Catherine. And next is uh, Sean. Go ahead. Uh, hey there. Um, I just wanted to say that um, you know this election was a hot mess. Um, you know. I heard from so many people that, you know, votes weren't, re like, ballots weren't received, um, that they sent them, and they weren't counted, but I am personally not going to get sour or sore over it, because it's like, it is what it is. It really falls under Empower LA. Um, the website was a hot mess. It, like, it was not intuitive. It was not designed for people that were elderly. But I think that what happened today is that we have a really good board. And um, there's some new candidates that have like really, you know, strong opinions that are super valid. And the whole thing about all this is that we care so much about everyone. We care, and like the number one issue is homelessness. And, and that's what how Prop H, or Measure H and Triple H raise billions of dollars. Um, so to get our own housed, housed is like the number one priority. Um, that affects public health and public safety. And so um, I congratulate Pablo and Kevin and for coming on. And I think that they're like really super important voices to come on. Um, you know, I, I don't love losing by one vote, but it's no big deal because we're all in this together and we all have voices and we all get to come together. So I think that it's really healthy. Um, I really love that, um, you know, there was a term limit. You know, we didn't need 12 years. And so I think that we can go into this next era where people want change. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. We have to cut you off. Uh, next is uh, Kevin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, just a few things um, about this meeting. I, it'd be really nice for the um, public to not have to hear people coughing into the mic. Um, if you have to cough, please mute your mic. And the meeting host should also be able to do that. Um, uh, one thing that one of the board members said earlier, uh, Mr. Delijani, uh, accused somebody of being Trump-like. Um, I just wanna bring that back up because that's just so out of line. Uh, it's, it's public record. You can look it up on September 25th, 2019. Deli Johnny donated $4,000 to Donald Trump and his super PAC that supports the Republican Senate candidates, uh, two different donations, one 2000 uh, to Donald Trump himself and the other 2000 to the RNC PAC. So a lot of you ran on the same slate as him and never uh, once acknowledged this. And now it seems that Deli Johnny himself is just like pretending that he's anti-Trump when he literally gave him money. Um, so that's fun. And uh, Rick, I uh, congratulate you on your victory and I, um, I wish you the best in leading this board, um, as well as, uh, you know, Kevin, Michelle, and Pablo, congratulations on um, your appointments as well. Thank you, Kevin. All right, thank you. And Nisha, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, yeah, I just also wanted to congratulate everybody um, and say, uh, you know, I, I pretty recently found, I've been in Angelino for a long time, but only recently realized I was a stakeholder. Um, and I'm excited to part, keep participating as a stakeholder. Um, a couple issues that I just want to flag as important to me as a stakeholder. Um, one is making voting more accessible, um, outreach, particularly to people employed downtown. There are, that's a huge contingent of stakeholders. And as an employee, um, I haven't really, uh, you know, uh, been reached out to or seen that 
amongst other folks who are employed downtown. And that's something um, that, you know, Guadalupe earlier was speaking about the Worker Center. So I just want to uh, put out there my support for more efforts on D-Link to do outreach specifically, outreach and support, support specifically to the people that work downtown. Um, thank you all. And it's, uh, I hope it's good to meet you, I guess. <laughs> thank you, Nisha. Um, I appreciate that. I had the same experience with people working downtown. So it resonates with me. Yeah. Uh, so next person up is Antonio. Go ahead and unmute. Antonio. Uh, okay, so no response. We'll move on. Uh, Harry, go ahead uh, on mute. Oh, it's uh, it's Sessie again. Oh. Uh, Hi, I, I, again, congratulations to everybody, and um, I'm excited to meet you all, and I hope I do one day meet you. Um, I would love to see you, uh, the D-Link board, really come up with goals that you have uh, for the year, um, to have projects that you're working on, um, to have a, like a real vision that can engage the community and get us excited, uh, because part of engagement is not only saying, hey, we exist, but the other part is getting more people involved. And um, you know, each of the committees with uh, active volunteers and for you to, um, uh, to, have, to have an exciting enough vision that, that it automatically um, it excites people and brings more people to, to, this, to this table. All politics is local. Um, and I think together, the really passionate people who love downtown, have a vision for downtown, really can create something wonderful. And I just wanted to um, offer my support. And if you want help on a committee, if you have a vision, if you have a, a, a strategic need, um, please reach out to me. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ceci. I love when people volunteer because I'm listening. All right, uh, Mr. President, so those are all the public comments that were raised. Uh, for Point of order, I, I raised my hand. I'd like to do general public comment. Uh, board members cannot make public comment. This is, uh, public comment is for uh, the public itself. So I can't make a comment as a member of the public? No, you're a board member. You're part of the legislative board. This is the time dedicated for just the public itself. And also in regards to public comment, board members cannot make it because if you bring up issues that are not in agenda, that's a, a Brown Act issue at that time. For, for those concerns. Uh, point, of, point of order, sorry, Jose, um, just to clarify, Ryan, um, at the end of it, you have a chance to say whatever it is that I have said under uh, board member announcements. Yep. So Jose, uh, I know, is Claire Kelly still here from planning? Bless you if you've stayed the whole time. Uh, she's a guest and I'd like to pull her on so she doesn't have to stay much longer. Uh, I'm looking at truncating the agenda, so I'd like anyone who has submitted items to say which ones we can table till next time or which ones are critical so we can triage uh, what was put on the original agenda. So, Claire, are you with us? Uh, yep, where is... Claire, the floor is yours. I, uh, Rick, I just want to be clear uh, in which agenda item is uh, are we are you at this time? Speakers, uh, presentations, possible representatives from. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Item number 10. It'll be item number 10. 10B. Gotcha. Right. Well, I don't hear her. So. Uh... Oh, sorry. I'm I'm here. Oh, sorry. go ahead. You have, uh, the allotted five minutes. Uh, thank you for staying. Uh, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, 
And I'd, I'd like to start off just by thanking D-Link and um, all of the neighborhood council stakeholders who have been engaged with the downtown community plan update process for the past several years. Um, your, your feedback and participation has been invaluable, um, especially the members of the ad hoc working group um, who have uh, helped over the past couple of years um, to inform the development of the downtown community plan. Um, I'm here just to give a quick, quick update on the community plan, um, which is a combined update to two existing community plans, Central City and Central City North. Uh, this effort was launched in 2014 and has been an ongoing partnership between the city and the downtown community. And we've received feedback on multiple iterations of the community plan and um, have been fortunate to get the chance to meet and speak with you, um, with a lot of you at um, the various community engagement events that we've held over the past several years. Uh, so to give an update on the process, the community plan uh, a, a draft of the community plan was released in November of last year, um, and a public hearing was held in December of 2020. Along with the public hearing draft of the community plan, the department also released a draft of the new zoning code. Uh, this release was accompanied by several virtual public engagement events, including uh, planning 101 webinars, downtown focused virtual open houses, and the virtual public hearing. And the materials, recorded presentations, and a record of the public comments received at the public hearing um, are all available on our downtown plan website along with other key information and summary documents. There are translated materials available uh, in four different languages along with English on the website as well. So coming up next, we are excited to tell you that the downtown community plan is now entering the formal adoption process. Staff is currently updating the plan and new zoning code based on the feedback that we have received in the past several months to the public hearing draft of the plan. As we enter the adopt phase of the community plan update process, we will be releasing an updated proposed draft of the plan and code in advance of the plan being considered at the City Planning Commission. Uh, CPC, the City Planning Commission, will consider the proposed plan and new zoning code in late spring or early summer. Uh, you can find information once the date is released on our website. And after CPC, the plan will move forward to be considered by the Planning and Land Use Management Committee of City Council, also known as PLUM, followed by full City Council. Um, there are many opportunities for input and public participation throughout the remainder of the process, starting with opportunities for public comment at the City Planning Commission. Uh, comments may also be submitted in writing. For more information about how to attend upcoming public meetings, uh, to view the draft plan and draft zoning code, as well as informational materials, and to sign up uh, to receive email updates from City Planning, you can visit planning the number four la.org slash DTLA 2040. And thanks again so much for all of your engagement. Thank you, Claire. <clears throat> I look forward to seeing that. That was one of the first things I think I participated in as a new board member a few months ago. And then that last one of the iterations. So uh, thank you for your report. Uh, let me uh, just try to move this along. I'd like- Yes, Rick, Rick, Christopher Antonelli, Area Director for Downtown Los Angeles for Council Member Kevin DeLeon. And I, I believe you are going to skip through the agenda to do the presentations. Um, there is an item on your agenda for the 25 by 25 motion is now an appropriate time to take that up. I'm going to take that. I have not forgotten that's on my list. I'm just going to go down the, uh, the list. So that's there. So thank you, Christopher. 
I'm not forgetting it. You know, homelessness is on my list. Um, let me just do some functional things here to move us along. <clears throat> Could I get a motion from a board member to table items five, six, seven, eight, and nine? Uh, I'll make the motion. And who was that? Ryan. All seconded. Seconded by Claudia? Naira. Naira. I don't have you up, so I'm just trying to follow the agenda. Can I actually, sorry, can I actually make an amendment? We do need number five. Number five needs to be taken care of. Number physical posting for site volunteer. We need to have somebody to post physically all the agenda items. This is a Brown Act compliance issue. <clears throat> is, uh, is that for all committees or are you just talking about the board? No, that, I would that, hope that it would be for everyone. All right, who's, who's presenting on this item then? Because uh, it's under the president, so or no, it isn't. Sorry, Ryan, are you? Uh... That's for you to decide. No, I, I'm not volunteering. I, I think we just need to figure it out. Rick, if you wanted to address uh, item five, then somebody can make a motion. Well, let's uh, separate item five, uh, and let's do. The amendment was to pull out item five. Correct, Ryan? It was. And I believe that you're going to have to call for a motion, do public comment, and then a vote on whoever that person is. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and uh, so let's get the table motion, uh, the amended table motion out of the way, um, which was moved. And the seconder is approving with the amendment. Is that correct? Uh, first, uh, have us, did someone second the motion for the amendment? Naira, I believe that would be you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, friendly amendment. Yeah, move over to uh, public comment. Okay. First, uh, just uh, to address public comment and then go for board discussion and board action. Okay. So we have a motion to table item six through nine. Um, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the motion. Four, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. That's the motion, but the amended motion is to. Uh, removed item five uh, from the from tabling. So I made the motion. I'm just clarifying it. My motion from the beginning is table number four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's my motion. And Naira seconded it. Okay. All right. Uh, point of order about number four. Don't we? I think the new board members need emails in order to do our work the next month. Jose, that's uh, those are issued by. Uh, the department, right? Uh, no, that's issued by your webmaster. Your webmaster will issue the, the emails to all, all the newly elected board members and provide that to them. Ryan, why don't we uh, <clears throat> just go six through nine and leave four up for now, and then we'll work down the agenda and I will bring back those uh, later on because this uh, member's office has it on the agenda and we have a number of other things I'd like okay. to I, I withdraw my motion and I'm putting forward a new motion to table items six through nine. Myra, do you second that? I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. So a motion has been uh, made to table items six through nine. Uh, any public comment? We have two hands up. Uh, go ahead. Uh, see, uh, Sean? Yeah, hi. Um, a uh, personal point of privilege. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I'm so happy that the LGBT community is represented. We have a very out man representing our board, um, and so um, and so. Sean, LGBT or L are invisible Sean. people. Uh, this is in regards to the tabling the, the items. Do you have any comments, sure. or comments regarding that? Um, yes. And so that um, the people that are invisible um, need to be heard. And, um, and we fully support uh, Brick. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, Brian? 
Hi guys, it's Rian here. Um, I'm actually on the, I was on part of the people that is going to be tabled, but I think it's a welcome choice and partially because of the conversation about liaisons for our new board members, the liaisons position, and I hope Jose can explain it very briefly, but um, basically there are there, uh, opportunities for stakeholders and board members to engage with both the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and relevant city departments and agencies in advising and engaging and informing the board on those on relevant actions such as public works, such as filming, homelessness, animal services, uh, purposeful aging, LGBTQ issues, and the various alliances in the city of Los Angeles. And so this is an opportunity to go to, first of all, find if you have an interest in any of these subjects and also engage with stakeholders that are interested in participating and working um, with, your, with the board and with the president on addressing these issues and bringing these issues to the community. So take the time to do some research for next month. And this is an incredible opportunity. And so I hope next month to talk about the works with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Rita. Any other comments from the public? Uh, that's it for public comment. So back to your board, to the board. Any board comments, questions? So yeah, there's Brian's hands up. Sorry, I'm go. Okay, Ryan. Accidental, sorry. Uh, I like to call for the vote. All right, let's uh, proceed with the vote. Uh, is the uh, note taker ready for the <laughs> The order and does Jose, could you do the uh, the list for us? Uh, point, of, point of information, Jose, is it possible that we can just vote uh, yes and no, abstains, and um, um, so that we, we don't have to go by roll call since it's not a financial item? Yeah, uh, for this, I could go for uh, those opposed, uh, abstentions, and then uh, the remaining uh, count from, from those that are in attendance uh, would be the, the yes. Thank you. All right. So then we don't need to do a roll call. Let's do this in the efficient way. Uh, anyone abstaining? Anyone opposed? Rest in favor. Nod your heads. Uh, Aye. Aye. Then it's Aye. Unanimous. Uh, unanimous uh, tabling of the motion of items six through nine. <clears throat> Point of information, John Parton, does the motion pass? Yes, uh, the yeah. motion passes. It Thank does, you. it was unanimous. I appreciate everyone weighing in to help. Uh, this is on the job training because I didn't do this agenda. So uh, I'm uh, adjusting as we go along here. Uh, now, one of the things is, is the uh, item 13 a motion for the board to approve the minutes of the March 9th, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion to do that? Yes, Wendell, a motion. Thank you, Wendell. Is there a second? Tony. I second. Who seconded, sorry? Tony. Tony seconded. Uh, are there any discussion, any corrections? Now that's on the table. Hearing none, we'll do the uh, uh, check for public comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, for anybody who would like to make a public comment on the minutes, uh, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, seeing none, go back to the board for, for, it goes back to the board. Clarification, this can only be voted on by members who were present at that meeting, correct? That is correct. Abstain if you were not present. So let's do that. Let's begin with abstentions if you were not present. Raise your hand. Abstain. Abstain from Melinda. Abstain from Ellen. Abstain from James. Thank you should you use the hand if you can. Yeah, so it can stay up. Is our note taker getting all of this? I don't see him.
use your hand button at the bottom of the screen. There you go. I'm sorry, I'm uh, dialing in um, on the browser. I can't find it. Okay, uh, so you're abstaining because you weren't here, Melinda, is that correct? Correct, yes. Thank you. Abstaining, Ellen Gross, I wasn't there. Okay, that makes uh, 11 abstentions. Uh, his name, Jose. Uh, for the names, it's uh, Melinda, Kevin, Ryan, Michelle, uh, Lori, Pablo, James, Debbie, Cody, Jehan, Alan. Uh, would I, did I miss anybody else? Nope, I think you got it. Okay. There you are, John. Uh, so you got it all, John? Yes. All right, let's, let's move. Anyone opposed on the minutes? Raise your hand. Or take your hands down as the case may be. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, more hands here. Okay, so those that are opposed, raise your hand. Seeing none. We move forward. Those uh, in favor, put your hands up. Let's just make this thorough all the way around. You were in the meeting and you uh, approve of the minutes. Thank you, Patty. And Wendell. And Wendell, thank you. All right. Rick, can I make a request? Yes. Are we done with this motion? I'm so sorry. Uh, I was going to check with Jose. Any uh, any nuances I'm missing on this? It's pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Who were those uh, that were in favor? Uh, myself, Patty, Claudia, Tony. You were there. Naira, you were there. Uh, Wendell? Wendell. Yes. Those are the names. So far, I got six in favor. So, I mean, motion passes. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, let me go back to the agenda. Rick, can I make one request? Sure. Uh, I know that it's we're in a little bit of a quasi kind of in between boards at this point, and it's a little awkward. Uh, planning and land use, if I'm understanding correctly, which was at least a, a in, so far has been my my committee. Uh, I know those are a lot of members of people who are not on the board. Items that uh, you know reference people who are not on the board. If we could maybe get their stuff through their stuff now, so they can go to sleep. Right, and then we can. Uh, and then we can do internal business. You see. Uh, <clears throat> We have uh, we've done the minutes. Uh, we have. Is there any urgency as point of information? Any urgency on this appointment to the Empower LA grievance panel? Just going to see where we can call some things here. And I think we have a lot of issues with grievances. Maybe that's something we keep on the agenda. It was actually going to be my public comment. It was going to be that. So um, as the person that's getting possibly confirmed, I wouldn't mind if you tabled, if you postponed this to the next meeting. I second it. <laughs> All right, so there was a motion by Claudia to table item 14 and Wendell seconded it. Uh, uh, let's, let's any conversation, uh, Ryan, you have something to say? Alexa is weighing in now. Sorry, folks. Uh, any comments? Okay. Hearing no comments, uh, let's call for the vote to uh, table the item 14A, uh, which 
would approve the appointment of Claudia to the Empower LA grievance panel. I may go back to the full screen. All right, uh, let's, this doesn't require Jose a... Uh, uh, no, you can call for those, uh, those opposed abstentions and then okay. in favor. Perfect. <clears throat> those abstentions on this tabling of this item, show your hand, raise your hand physically or with the electronics. Okay. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five abstentions, uh, Kevin, James, Pablo, Michelle, and Patty. Mm -hmm. Melinda also. I, I have seen as well. Melinda. Uh, Brian has seen as well. Okay. Melinda and Brian, so that's seven abstentions. Okay, uh, any opposed? You could clear your raised hands from the previous ask. Okay. Sorry, who are the abstentions again? Jose, you have the names. Uh, couldn't quite get them all. Uh, it was it was uh, Patty, Michelle, James, Debbie, Kevin, Ryan, and Melinda. Okay. Did you get Pablo's name? Oh, and Pablo. There you go. So, any opposed to the? Uh, Tabling the grievance issue. I don't see anybody opposed. None. None, none opposed. Uh, John. Uh, and all those in favor? We'll be uh, 13 in favor. Down in favor. All right. You got the names. Yeah, it's still the, the rest. We'll see the rest of us. Okay. Point of information, do we have to vote to not vote on something? Can't the president just decide to take it off the agenda? It's a motion to table. It needs to be very clear where it's going. So if it's a motion to postpone, it's one thing, but we tend to use under our, our regular standing rules, a motion to table. So that means it can push it into the future and then have some flexibility with it. So yes, we have to, to vote in, as an action. Uh, yeah, so, so the motion passed. Okay. Uh, th as, uh, 13 uh, in favor, seven abstentions, zero opposed. Okay. Well, let's, let me try to get through this stuff. Uh, item 16 is the, uh, we have three items there. Um, I would Rick, yeah. uh, I would like to declare an ex parte communication. Oh, sorry, did we? So I would like to um, declare a, an ex parte communication as I have spoken with uh, two members of the council member's office um, about uh, <laughs> item 16C. And, uh, but I have nothing to recuse myself from. I just spoke with them. So, expert in communication. Are there any of those for item 16? We're going to do that uh, ex parte communications uh, as we get down through each of these items going forward. So, just a conversation. So, thank you, Claudia, for bringing that up and as I'm scrolling the agenda. Uh, so, I would like to table um, item 16B um, as uh, we, there needs to be additional due diligence done before we can vote on that particular item. Uh, so I'd like to move that at least to the May meeting before we actually vote on that. The table will uh, take care of that. Do you also want to uh, include, uh, this is a chair suggestion, any of the financial issue motions that are in the same? Yes, yes, I would like to table items D1 and 2 um, for the same, well, D1, we didn't have a, um, the, the monthly expenditure report was not attached to the, uh, the, the calendar, so people have not had a chance to actually review that. Um, but item D2, um, 
Additionally, uh, related to item 16B should also be tabled to next month so we can do some additional due diligence before we actually vote on those. And <clears throat> the other uh, expenditures, I'm just looking at, I'd like to see a, a finance and budget committee that weighs in on anything financial uh, before it comes to the board. So could we just sweep all of those into your table motion, Tony? Sure, absolutely. I, I would be in agreement for that. Are there any critical items like website hosting, for example, that we have to maintain? Um, we have item D3. Um, I'm not sure if we if that's if that's an urgent matter, if we have to vote on it today. Um, you know, that's I'm not involved with the website website hosting in particular, so I don't know the nuances of how that works behind the scenes. Um, but uh, I would say that we should be able to table that till next month. Uh, this, hi, this is Jose. Uh, also uh, just oh, I'm sorry. The one, the one I think we should keep on the floor is item D4 because that is the minute taker, and um, we need to we need to approve that so we can continue making sure he's taken care of. Okay, and uh, this is Jose. Uh, uh, also, suggest uh, item D6. Uh, no, D7. Uh, for the selection of the credit card holders and the second signer. Right, that we should, uh, we need to deal with that today. Is what you're saying, Jose? Yeah. Okay. Some of these items, I, I just wanna iterate. I have not seen the invoice for things like the mailbox. I don't know what the due date is on that. I don't know, um, you know, when we have to pay that. And I don't know if, I assume that's an annual fee, but I've never seen an invoice for that. So um, it, interestingly, that particular item, we've never actually voted on it. I don't believe, I don't, we've never, I've never seen an invoice or anything for that. Um, let's just move all of, all right, so let's go So back. let's, let's move, uh, let me just go, re, re, we should do item uh, D4, D7. We should vote on those. Vote on D4 and D7. That's right. <clears throat> then the motion to postpone is for items. There was one. Oh, yes. Uh, 16. 16B. 16B and then D1, 2, 3. three Five and six. Five and six. I'll second that. You, Claudia? It was Naira. Naira, sorry. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to learn everybody's voices in a few months, I hope. No uh, worries. I with each of you, so I can see you your face and have the lips move in front of me because I'm just looking at the agenda now. Uh, all right, so there was a motion uh, made by uh, Tony and seconded by Naira to table those items, uh, discussion? Any questions? Let's call for the vote. I'm just curious, Jose, any, uh, any protocol as far as public comment? This is an action item uh, and it's yeah. money, so I think I would tilt to a higher uh, yeah, check out for, for public comment before the vote. Um, so again, for anyone who would like to make a public comment on the items that are being tabled, uh, please raise your hand or star nine if you called in. Uh, seeing none. Oh, yeah, I don't see any. Let's move on. Okay. So there was no public comment. Uh, let's go to a vote. And this involves money, so it's everyone uh, voting publicly uh, down the roster. So, Jose, would you call the roster for us, please? Sure. Uh, hold on. Point of order. This is the motion to postpone those items. Yes. Do we have to go sure. over the roster? Right. Money. They're all money items. Well, sure. We're not approving money. We're, we're just postponing tabling. the motion. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. not approving the motion. Yeah, it's tabling the, the item, so it's, it's not a required of a roll call vote. You can do call for abstentions, uh, those opposed, and those, those in favor as well. All right, 
well, when, when I hear the M word, I default in that direction, but uh, let's, yes, let's do that. So any abstentions from this motion to table? No hands going up. All right, no abstentions. Anyone opposed? All those in favor, put your hand up. Uh, no, nope, you don't need it. Uh, that's uh, like unanimous. Excuse me, yes, I was being anal retentive there. Sorry, folks. <laughs> so uh, it's unanimous, the motion passes. Thank you for the correct language, Jose. Um, so there are items that are still remaining to be dealt with. So let's commence with uh, new business 16A. I think given the comments about the election, uh, the motion is for the DLANC board shall send a letter to the office of the city clerk requesting that our registration forms from the 2021 election be turned over to DLANC for purposes of outreach. Is there a motion to- Motion. I second. Okay. A cabin. Now that we have a motion in a second. Um, wh what does that exactly entail? Thank you for the start of discussion. Who put this on the agenda? What does that entail? We're getting people's registrations and we're sending people's physical registration to D-Link. Does anyone know where this came from? I do. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. We are told to do this every time there's an election because the records must be kept for a certain period of time. So we make a formal rec uh, recommendation that we get the records when they're ready. They will not be ready for a couple of months if I'm correct. Is that true, Jose? Yeah, so uh, the, the city clerk uh, will provide all the copies of the registrations, ballots, uh, the documents that were used for the neighbor council's elections, for the neighbor council to keep the only store for about about 90 days after the elections. After that, it gets uh, sent to get disposed or uh, shredded, um, uh, all those documents. Then we need to move on this clearly. Uh, Patty is a point of information. Is uh, this a standard letter that's in the file in our records or uh, has this been drafted already? No, it has not. We usually just email a request. Okay. All right, is there any other? Thank you, Patty, for that. Uh, that's a, uh, any uh, other discussion on this? Um, I just wanna, who, who actually drafts the letter is the secretary? Yes. Patty, is that what? Are you asking me? Because there's never, this only happens every two years and, and uh, we normally send an email request to the city clerk or to whoever, or to Dunn, whoever it happens to be requesting it. You can do it any way you want. Yeah, it doesn't require an official letter. Like you just, uh, the board, uh, one of the officers uh, what, or the president just sends the, the email to the city clerk requesting for the paper council's documents to, that, were, uh, that are for them to pick up for, for the elections. Well, I mean, end of the elections. So that could be, it could be Rick. Rick could just send the email to, <coughs> to Dunn and ask for that. Uh, it's the uh, city clerk's election division. Yeah, city clerk. Guys, I, I just want to say, I, I don't know. I want to check if Lori has her hand up for a little while. Yeah. I don't know if she wants yeah. to say something. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was waiting for everyone to stop. Um, I, I mean, I, I assume that if Empower LA, you know, gets rid of these, these records that they aren't required by any law to keep the records. And frankly, I don't recall when I registered saying that I was giving my information over to DLANC. And frankly, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of the idea uh, of, that, of that happening um, without it being expressly part of something that people were agreeing to when they were registering. If we want to use that as a way to get people information from people who are interested in the board and interested in the activities, then I think that should be clarified as part of that process. Um, but I'm, I'm not comfortable with using that process um, um, to, to gather information when it hasn't been made clear that way. I agree on its face, even the idea of, you know, yeah. people who are essentially constant candidates for some office or another, having access to registration of voters, I just don't think is 
it, it doesn't seem prudent. doesn't seem kosher to me. I know personally, I went, you know, block by block and registered a bunch of people. Most people were very hesitant to even give me their information, let alone copy their ID or their full name. And I know they wouldn't be happy if they knew that this was happening. Uh, well, hi, uh, I just want to clarify that it's not the Department of Labor Department that have these uh, documents. It's the city clerk's election division who uh, hold on to these uh, documents uh, at the end of the elections and give the opportunity to the neighbor councils to pick up those documents to for them to archive uh, just for historical purposes. Or... But Jose, there's no requirement to archive. Like legally, there's no requirement for us to do this. No, uh, again, it's not, and, and it's uh, again, it's the option of the neighbor council to to choose to to pick up or not, because uh, uh, at the after the ninety days, uh, the city clerk disposes of them because they don't have the space to to keep them all. That's why. Okay, so it <clears throat> seems clear that this is a board decision on whether we want to keep archiving something, um, and I think a lot of issues there. So uh, I would like to withdraw my motion. Perfect. Uh, and the person who seconded it's agreed? Yeah, so it's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so the motion is withdrawn. It dies. Uh, if it wasn't made or seconded. So moving, moving forward. Thank you, everybody. Uh, item 16B. Uh, we caught that in your, uh, Tony, your motion to table, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Uh, That's correct. Here is here is something that Christopher was making sure we didn't forget. So I'm finally glad to get to it, Christopher. This is item 16C. The motion for the DLANC board shall approve a CIS in favor of council file 210552, or 0052, which was attached. <clears throat> creation of at least 25,000 new housing units by 2025, regardless of the type of unit as the city's homeless housing goal. This was a full city council motion uh, that was in the packet. Uh, and I've heard the councilman talk on this at another meeting. Um, is there a motion to- uh, Motion, Claudia. Claudia has moved a second on item 16C. All seconded, Naira. Naira, Claudia. Motion, Naira seconded. <clears throat> so are there, Christopher's here with their questions, uh, questions from the board? Do I get to speak on the item, President Rick? Sure, why don't you enlighten us more than the three lines I've given you and the other data that I may have, please do that. Absolutely, and I, uh, congratulations, uh, President Rick and all the rest of the um, board members uh, who've gotten elected. Uh, Rick did mention that uh, the council member um, has brought forth uh, a motion that went out of, got out of committee last week. Uh, it is a directive to build 25,000 housing units by 2025 to put at the top of the list these types of projects so that the chief legislative um, uh, folks uh, in City Hall, make sure that these projects are prioritized. Uh, and it's it's not a specific type of housing. It certainly could be a housing that is already in existence, hotels, motels. Uh, but we, in order for folks to get off the street, um, we need to have attractive options for them. So we need to step it up. Uh, that is the council motion. I am prepared to do a, a whole dog and pony show uh, with the PowerPoint, but I don't think anybody wants that uh, tonight. As, as, as if you need it, I can I can certainly present that. Uh, but I kindly and respectfully ask for your I vote and um, your um, support on this measure from this neighborhood council. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. I look forward to talking with you uh, soon and connecting our uh, two two jobs. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so any further discussion from the board or do I want to double back to public comment? Rick, we have three people with hands up. Okay, good. Sorry. Kevin, you have a question. Yeah, I was wondering if there was any clarification on this point um, about what what is considered a housing unit. So like, for example, is that shelter space? Is it a, a, a 
like an apartment dwelling? Is it a hotel room? Is it safe camping? Um, like what is and is not considered a sleeping unit for the purposes of this 25 by 25 initiative or a housing unit rather? This motion does not uh, specifically define. So it's um, it, it really is uh, any number of definitions um, in terms of housing units. Ryan is next. Okay, Brian. You, Listen, I, I appreciate the intent, okay? As somebody who's been on this, on this board for many years, we've seen these things come and go. It's, it just seems like a platitude. We, we have a goal, we're gonna create this many, we wanna do this, where's the money, where's the plan, where's the follow through and where is the you know, stick if this doesn't happen? I mean, of course we have goals. I have a goal that we have 50,000 units of homeless housing. We have 80,000 homeless people right now in LA. The problem is every time we try to do this with a solution, it doesn't happen. The intent is already there. We don't need a motion from the city council for the intent. We have the intent. What we need to focus on is having some, uh, some teeth, some consequences if it doesn't happen, some plan of action, some cost, some resource. I mean, we tried measure H, we got about 30% of the housing that we wanted. Let's come up with a real plan. That's that's my only concern. I obviously support this, but I don't really Thank know. Thank you, Mr. Afari. Thanks for your nice. support. Other I just want to reiterate what Kevin said. I'm a little concerned on the definition of housing here. And Christopher, your inability to give us a definition is, you know, doesn't help. Um, I hate to uh, agree with, or I wouldn't say I hate to, but I don't know if Ryan and, and I are going to agree on a lot, but I do agree that this is a political move without clear definition on what housing is. Um, I'd like more um, clarity on that. I want dignified housing. I don't want tiny boxes for people. I don't want um, temporary housing. I want real solutions. And I think Kevin DeLeon can do better than this, to be honest. Okay, Pablo, this motion does not address the type of housing unit. So um, I apologize. It is, it is, it is a goal. Hi, Melinda. I would like to speak. Um, I can't sorry, my Melinda. Hand. Claudia is next. Oh, that's fine. I just can't raise my hand. So just so, yeah. you know, just okay. Raise it like this and I'll call you. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Claudia, I'm happy to agree with you, by the way. Hi, I'm going to be short, Melinda. Um, so, so I just want to say that I understand the open endedness of this is that there's always adaptability and, and there's going to be outreach. I'm hoping that to find out what kind of housing do people want, because we keep on building things and then, you know, some, some folks need, uh, uh, certain needs. And I think that there has to be outreach to figure out what housing needs, uh, different people need to to have what's ideal for them like what I, what i think it's housing for me doesn't necessarily means it's housing for the people that are actually going to be living in that and i think that that's important to do outreach with that being said i am fully supportive of this um this initiative i think that it's it, it's not going to be easy uh, you know we've seen these things like like ryan said over and over but you know it starts with a vision and if it's a positive vision that's going to get people into housing, I am supportive of it. And then let's figure out how to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oliveira. Go uh, ahead, Melinda. <clears throat> hello. Um, so I actually, I support the idea behind it because I, I, I think like many people, I, I voted yes on each um, and all the other similar measures, but not a lot has changed. And um, I, as I, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch any of the d um, debates or discussions, but one of the things to me that's really important is mental health care outreach. I know De Leon had actually discussed this when he did the symposium with Patty, when he sort of did a meet and greet online with the neighborhood last year. Um, and I really, really feel like it doesn't matter how much housing you guys build. I know Kevin is very aware, but I really have to reiterate, um, it doesn't matter if people won't be accepting of the housing and accepting of the care. And But I do think that leaving it open-ended is a good thing because we can't define for people who are 
uh, not necessarily capable of making responsible choices uh, based on the housing that we think is fit for them. Uh, we have to do something that will get the, just get them into a safer place where they will accept it. So thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, Tony? Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, you know, it is a lofty goal, but I would like to support the council member in at least setting a goal because we don't really have many, we have, we don't really have any specific goals. At least this is very specific. Um, the details on how he would achieve that, um, can come out in the wash a little bit later, but at least there's a goal here. Um, and I think we should, um, support at minimum, you know, a goal. You just, goal, you know, you, you don't achieve anything unless you aim for a goal, right? So I think this is um, at least a start. Thank you, Tony. We want you to be part of the uh, discussion as this um, becomes, hopefully becomes reality. And we, we certainly want you to work with our council office. So I certainly do appreciate um, uh, and respectfully request your support on this item. So th thank you, Tony. Thank you, the rest of you as well. Absolutely. I have Ryan next, and then we go to public comment. Okay. Thank you. I'm so, so, I'm so sorry for speaking twice on this item, but just something I'm passionate about, and it's my expertise. It's my business. One, one thing I'd like you to take back to the councilman is the idea of putting out an RFP for housing. The city and the government is not good at developing. You guys are not good developers. You're not efficient developers. It's not your job. It's not what you're elected to do. Let the developers be the developers. Put out an RFP say, this is how much we're gonna pay for housing. It'll be a third of the cost of what it costs for you guys to build it and let the developers build it with an incentive and put the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and say, this is how much we're willing to pay. This is the housing we need, go develop it for us. I promise you in one year, you'll have the whole solution. So, thank you. Uh, thank you we Mr. have Farr. Melinda next. Melinda. Sorry, one thing that uh, Ryan actually jogged my memory on that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for a long time, specifically De Leon, um, is doing some sort of a joint outreach with NAMI, which is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, uh, but it's the National Alliance on Mel Mental Illness and uh, doing some sort of teamwork with them to help with the outreach. Because I think that the problem with the way that our government functions is Maybe we have a goal, we have a common goal where we want to help these people, but no one knows how to effectively communicate with them. So that's something that I think could actually really be helpful. Um, and I would love to discuss that with you guys. Thanks. Please do. Is there a way that I could put my email into the chat so that you can contact me directly to further the conversation? Actually, I'm going to uh, short circuit you there, Christopher. I'm just going to ask everyone to email me who's addressing these issues. Again, at the, <clears throat> during the election, I said I'm looking at the idea of a special session, and I need people who have ideas, expertise on this to uh, perhaps form an ad hoc committee, which I need to check the rules on. This is not an agenda item. I'm just informing you that if you will email me of your interest on this, I look forward to seeing you on to Christopher, and we'll put our heads together on this. Because Fantastic. I all right, I'm gonna to move to public comments now, Rian. Hi guys, um, first of all, Christopher, I wanna applaud you and the council member. I know these motions tend to be difficult at times. One note, definitely you should add the CAO instead of the CLA, they will get, they'll, they'll look at this and say, what the heck, just from experience. <laughs> um, for your fresh face uh, to, the, to um, the CD office itself. Um, it's good to have you on board. On another note, um, Richard, one quick thing is with this motion, um, we have to potentially, and Jose will explain this to you as well, um, we have to address the issue of approving um, a, a poster for the CIS system. Hopefully Jose can explain that after, after this conversation, but basically as considering this item, if it does get approved, we, we would need to kind of reconcile that. But otherwise, uh, this is an ambitious goal, but hey, we're, we, gotta, we have to have ambitious solutions. So. I support and let's let's go ahead and approve this CIS in favor of addressing this threat. Thank you, Mr. Reigns. Peter Kroon. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to just say that, you know, it seems very admirable she's setting goals of 25,000 housing units, um, but I would encourage DLANC to, you know, possibly send this back to committee 
um, and come back with, you know, some more clarified ideas of what that means. Um, I mean, we've seen across the city, um, certain council members championing, you know, painted squares in a parking lot as housing solutions. Um, and I think if we're setting, you know, ambitious goals for the future, they need to be goals that provide people with a dignified place to live. Um, and I think that that baseline needs to be clearly established when we're setting these goals, um, because I think we've, we've seen across Los Angeles that if that's not clearly established, um, people will try to provide sort of the least possible um, viable um, housing unit um, so that they can then criminalize uh, and sweep away our unhoused neighbors. Um, so I'd really encourage you to maybe take some, some time you know, possibly come forward with, um, you know, some, some guardrails to make sure that this is uh, a little bit more uh, thoughtful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Mr. Clune. Hi there. Um, so yes, um, if we look at it, it says creation of 25,000 new units by 2025, regardless of the unit. And so um, that is not very uh, defined. Um, Los, downtown Los Angeles adds about 2,000 units per quarter to the housing. And so um, we're doing about 20% um, you know, of the work and 1% of the land. And so if you think about it, um, you know, what, you know, I think we need like supportive, like, you know, supportive housing. And so I, I think that it needs to be more defined. Um, if we look at measure H and triple H, which was like $4 billion towards an issue that was supposed to uh, create 12,000 units that we haven't seen yet. Um, this, this goal seems very, very, very optimistic. And you know, that's a great goal but um, I think that we need to have it more defined. Thank you, Sean. We don't have any more public comments. Any uh, one, one last chance for board members? Any follow-up comments or questions for Christopher? Hearing none, uh, this is a, uh, our usual voting practice. Uh, any abstentions from the motion? See no abstentions. Uh, any opposed? I'm not seeing anybody opposed. Uh, I, so guess I, have, I have a question because I, I wanted to motion to move it back to committee um, for further discussion, but I don't know like what is the process if we want to create, for example, the ad hoc around this issue. Um, <clears throat> The process is once a motion's on the floor, it has to and is seconded it, to discuss. Unless the uh, people who've made the motion pull it, uh, then it stays until there's a vote taken. So mm -hmm. this train is leaving the station, uh, and I'll address the other thing uh, shortly. Hey, Richard, uh, this is Jose. Uh, so what was referred to? It's a, a motion to refer back to committee. Uh, just have to specify which committee it is going to be referred to and needs to be seconded as well, uh, discussed, and then uh, take it action on. All right. <clears throat> Thank you for that clarification. I missed that nuance, I will confess. <clears throat> Probably miss a few more things the longer we keep this thing going tonight. So uh, let's, let's see how we can handle it. Um, you know, our. But uh, Eric, uh, uh, Richard, uh, just to note though, like the vote already, already taken place, so it's already too late to make that call uh, it for uh, per Kevin's question. So uh, sorry for the disruption, just continue with the vote. Mr. Dieterly, Dieterly, you're more than welcome to contact me in my office and we wanna hear your input. Um, so Great. this does not close anything off. Sure, thank you. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's see, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, CIS letters do come out of uh, typically government liaison committee, 
Am I correct on that for anyone who's participated in that? Uh, Mr. President, as uh, co-chair of government liaison, yes, that is correct. Okay, then. Uh, Pass co-chair. Pass co-chair. Thank you for clarifying. So as far as process, approve the motion to send a letter. Uh, now I would refer this to, do I need any board action to refer it to CIS, Jose? Uh, no, uh, actually, I just, I just like wanted to call to, for the vote. Yeah. So like we right were now. in the middle of voting. Yeah, it was in the middle of the vote. So you already called for those that or for, for abstentions. Right. So like at that time when Kevin uh, spoke up regarding like a motion, it's already too late to call for it since uh, you already the board's in the middle of voting. Yeah. So we've done abstentions. Is there anyone who wishes to vote against the motion to uh, send a letter? Hold your peace. All right. <clears throat> um, let's just make this official. Those in favor of sending the letter, would you please raise your hand? Hey, Richard, since, since uh, there's no it's unanimous. Uh, opposition, no, no abstentions, it's unanimous. All right. Well, it's I think it's thorough sometimes since it's late. So uh, perfect. Um, all right. This motion has passed. We'll go to the next agenda item. And let's hurry. We've gotten. Uh, and taken care of for the council member. And I look forward to talking with you this week. Um, Fantastic. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, uh, point of information, Jose. So when we issue a CIS, we have uh, usually, I used to be the one to input that. I still have input authorization. Yes. Uh, you have to be authorized to actually input that into the council file system. Um, how, would, how would we handle that? Uh, if you were uh, already approved prior, you'll still have access to it, so that that doesn't change. Uh, the board can dis decide at a future board meeting to then uh, reappoint or re like you know for new CIS filers. Uh, Thank you. Uh -huh. <clears throat> All right, so we are through with that item. We move back under new business financial items. Uh, those that were remaining after we tabled most of them included item D4. Before. Tony? That's right. I'd like to make a motion for the board to approve a monthly expenditure in the amount of not to exceed $100 for the minute taker. Money's to come from the office budget line item. Vendor is Apple One. I'll second that. Who was uh, Ryan? You were the second. Okay. I'm getting a couple here guys thanks um <clears throat> any questions on the uh note taker who is present john i don't see any hands from the board but i do have a hands up from the attendee okay let's go to the public then person with an email address nate holden 411 at aol.com Can you hear us? Could you please unmute yourself? Hello. There you go. Great to be with you this evening. I'm Councilman Nate Holden, retired. And I've been watching the meeting and you're doing very well. Very proud of you. We created this neighborhood council when I was a member of the LA City Council. I will say, however, that when the motion is made, it's in order to have a substitute motion. And you vote in a substitute motion Substitute motion first. I just want to say that. Uh, Council member, are you available to be appointed parliamentarian? <laughs> no, I just think that uh, uh, each point should be given consideration. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, there is no more hands. I believe we are ready to vote on it. Jose, um, are you going to, we're going to, we have to do a roll call vote because this is a, an expenditure and I don't have the new, um, the, the roll call form. So are you, are you able to call that for me? Yeah, no problem. Uh, let's see, uh, starting, uh, Claudia? Yes. Tony? Yes. Patricia? I mean, uh, Patty?
Patty? Uh, I'll come back to Patty. Uh, Michelle? Yes. Wendell? I think we lost Wendell. Okay. Uh, Naria? Yes. Rick? Uh, I mean, Richard? Uh, it is a board policy understanding rules that the president will not vote on items only in the case of a tie. So, uh, Ryan? Yes. Lori? Abstain. Uh, Michael? Right, absent. Uh, Tyler? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Belinda? Abstain. Uh, Jose, just a reminder for the people if they didn't take their uh, training, so it would be ineligible if they didn't done, done their funding training. Yeah, I'll coordinate with the treasurer and I'll send them the list of those uh, who are in compliance with the trainings and those that are uh, ineligible so that he can make notes on the BAC. But don't they have to vote as inel ineligible? Can uh, they abstain, for example? Uh, it won't be abstain, it will be ineligible. Yeah. Jose, uh, do uh, the- I can, make, uh, I can make the correction. Uh, the correction can be made uh, on the BAC. Okay. Now, Jose, uh, is there a time frame for the uh, for doing the financial approvals once they're up seated? Uh, is there a window where that's an overlap? I thought I remember there was 45 days or 30 days to uh, do that, but they still cannot vote unless they've done the training. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Yeah, uh, per the uh, funding policy, they need to complete all three trainings in order to vote for any fun, uh, funding voting uh, items. So okay. anything that deals with expenditures, uh, the three trainings must be completed. There's no uh, grace period for that. Okay. So uh, Jose, in this case, we'll validate the vote uh, at a later date. Yeah, so uh, right now I'm just taking the, the vote count and then uh, in, in the BAC, just have to make the correction for those that right. are eligible right. uh, per, per the training. Because uh, at the same time, I need to get confirmation from rosters. Uh, since I don't know, there's some board members that might have uh, completed the training but haven't been updated. So I can't uh, confirm if, if, that's, uh, if it's accurate up to uh, this point. Um, right. So okay. uh, I, I'll continue, uh, Pablo. Yes. Uh, Alan? Alan? Absent? I don't see Alan. Okay. I believe uh, we lost him. Got it. Uh, Ebony? Mm -hmm. Ebony. Ebony. We lost her also. Okay. No. Oops. Oops. Cody. Yes. Yes. Jim. Yes. Debbie. Yes. James. Yes. Uh, Yehan? Yes. Thirteen in favor. Two abstentions. And we have four absent. On this, uh, oh yeah, Patty, uh, are you still there? Patty, no? Okay, so that's four absent. Uh, motion so the, passes. The motion provisionally passes. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, item uh, 16D, 
seven. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to select the credit card holders and second signer. I second it. Who are you, who are you selecting? That's a discussion. Uh, typically, it would be, it, it has been, I don't know, Jose, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but typically it, uh, the president had a card and uh, treasurer had a card. We right. have, according to the rules, we have the right to have three signature people, it two being the ma two main signature people and one being an alternate, you know, and this is done in case uh, we have an expense that needs to be paid for by credit card and the person is unavailable. And uh, it, it, I feel that as many, that we should take advantage of uh, having all those three signatures uh, just because to be able to fulfill, uh, to serve our stakeholders as, as fast as we can get a hold of somebody who does have um, those permissions. But that's not the motion that's on the on the table right now. The motion on the table is for the a second card, signer. Right? Yeah, the credit, the credit card, card and a second card. signer, not a third signer. It's only a motion for a primary. Okay. Well, yeah. later you can add the third signer. You know, I'm just saying how typically the credit right. card process works. Okay. Other other questions so, on the credit. I, I just I want to I just want to elaborate on the credit card situation. So we have two credit cards. The treasure card, credit card issued to the treasurer is for a, a very small amount. I think it's $200 as the limit on the card. So it's really kind of a, you know, a nothing burger, that second card. Um, and I think it's really for kind of an emergency for, you know, small expenses. Um, so I just want you to understand that, you know, you're not gonna have two credit cards with a high limit on it. You're gonna have one credit card with a high limit that goes to the president. I don't know wh what the credit limit it, it was on Patty's card. Uh, all I know is the one that I was issued only had a credit limit of two hundred dollars. Okay, <clears throat> um, Patty, did you come back so you answer the question on your credit card limit? Now to be my credit card limit, All right? Well, so that's the approval for the. Uh, hold on a sec. I have to go back and put my brain in order here. Uh, that we would for the selection of credit card holders and second signers. So <clears throat> now what's been the follow-up motion on this? Is, is the names of the people who are selected and should be amended to this motion, Tony? What's been done in the past? I think we just need to decide who's gonna hold the credit cards. And typically it's been the president and the treasurer. So who, who holds which card I think is what's is is uh, is uh, at question here. So should the treasurer hold the main card and the president hold the backup card or should the president hold the main card and the treasurer hold a backup card? I'm fine either way. And you know, so am I quite frankly. Uh, I'd rather not okay. delay things. Uh, so I'm fine with the treasurer having the longer, the larger card because these amounts all come before our monthly review then, right? Our expenditure review. Sure. So. <clears throat> Just to point out the, for financial officers, you need to complete the uh, city clerk's financial officer training, which they hold through Zoom. I was on that the other day, just nosing around Jose. Um, so, so the motion on the table then would be for me to hold the main card and then you would hold the backup card. Yes, so you made could the- Could we specify that motion to just be position-based and then forego voting on this over and over again unless there's a specific reason to change, to change yeah, it? Yeah, it would only be one vote. This is the vote right now and then they would issue the card. We would, I, we'd, we'd issue, we'd, we'd give the, the clerk our, our, our choice and who's holding the card and then we'll fill out the forms and then the clerk would reissue the card only on one one time. I, I would suggest sorry, point of information. I think um, Lori, maybe Jose can uh, clarify that it's it's the name of a person actual actually in the card, correct? So yes, that's yes, why it can be correct. A, it can, it couldn't say president of the link or treasure of the link. It has to be 
the persons, from what I remember, the person's an actual name goes on the card. That's so correct. That's yeah, I was just wondering if we could vote that in perpetuity, whoever was treasurer would hold X card. And then next, whoever's the next treasurer, whenever that is, you know, is automatically the holder of said card yeah. without anybody talking about it. It, it would be for okay. the term. Pardon, pardon me. So Jose, that's a, I think that that's a great idea from Lori. Is there, is, would that be a bylaw change or standing rules or what would that be like that we only have to vote once and that would just be the permanent, like just the way it's done? Uh, you'll need to either way approve them because you have to approve the admin packet, which is every fiscal year. So in the admin packet, you indicate who are your treasurer, your bank card holders, your second signer and alternate signer as well. And they have to fill out the, the forms uh, as well to, to submit over to the city clerk. Uh, the, the, the acknowledgement form for the, for the treasurer, bank card holders and the signers. Um, and that's done every fiscal year. Yeah, that's done, but can it just be done by whoever's treasurer? Like, do we have to vote on that or can it just be whoever's the treasurer every year? You can make it into a standing rule uh, of who would hold the, the bank card, uh, the, the bank cards. Uh, and, and that's- I mean, done. let's make our lives easier. <laughs> and then if there's an issue that somebody has, then it fix it at that point. Yeah, but uh, as, a, as, as a for now, uh, like one of the things to suggest uh, for the boards that uh, just indicate uh, who's the first bank, first bank card holder, second bank card holder, and then your second signer per the agenda item. I have Rian's hands up and I would like to hear him out. Um, I was just going to add that basically the city clerk has, like Jose has indicated, there's very strict policies on how they conduct funding and the transfer of the bank card. Um, I was just going to say that basically it's, it's, this, it's not a really big issue. This typically isn't a big issue in the neighborhood council system. It shouldn't be at least with most MCs. But um, in general, for those that are concerned, I advise you to look at the city clerk's uh, funding policy. It's like a it's about like a 48 doc, uh, page document, but it's very clear. And basically most NCs will have the treasurer and the treasurer does get it, so their own card. But if you want to add it to a standing rule, I, I think that would honestly be easier and that would take this entire question. So it doesn't have to be rocket science, guys. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Tony, would you like to amend the motion to reflect same? Sure. Um, so uh, how are we going to word this? So uh, the motion should be then to, uh, select the uh, treasurer as the primary card holder, uh, the president as the secondary card holder, um, and the president as the primary signer and the treasurer as the secondary signer. Uh, the, the primary one is a treasurer. The second signer, it's just uh, whoever af after that. Couldn't be the president, it, it, uh, the president, you're trying to have the president as a signer. Right, got it, okay. <clears throat> so. Primary, primary, secondary, secondary, treasurer, president. Sure. Did and can, can we add that that will be a standing rule? How can we do that? Uh, you'll have to agendize it at a, uh, for a yeah. future meeting. Okay. It's just not, not agendized. Right, right. Thank you for that. So you want me to amend the motion? The standing okay. rule, so we're going to have to schedule it for a different meeting? Yes. So, it's, not, uh, it's, not on, it's not on the agenda, so we have right. to schedule it for another meeting. Right. So uh, for Laurie, just to remember to get in touch with the president and the secretary so that they can schedule that for, this, for the standing rule. Send that as an agenda item is what uh, Claudia is saying. So I'd like to make an amendment to the motion. Um, the, 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 I'd like to make a motion to uh, select the president, uh, the, the treasurer as the primary card holder, the president as the secondary card holder, and second signer. Is that clear? Second. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, anything from the public? I know we have some people who are waiting for our development section, and I apologize that this is a long agenda that uh, I've inherited but we've got to get through this stuff. Uh, all right. Can I, can, I, can I just suggest again that we do the internal stuff after? I mean, we have 40 people waiting for these items. It's 1040. 
yeah, I was uh, thinking we would get through the councilman and others. We will, let's have the vote on this and then move forward. Uh, all right, anyone opposed to this motion for the first and second signer on the credit card? Or, excuse me. Oh, we have to do a roll call on this? This is monetary. This yeah. is a roll call, of course. Uh, involves money. It's yeah. not involving an expenditure. Uh, it's like the financial officers, that's why. Uh, so uh, I'll do the roll call vote. Claudia? Yes. Tony? Yes. Patty? Okay, uh, Michelle? Yes. Uh, Wendell? Oh, right. I'm seeing uh, Naria? Yes. Uh, Richard? I uh, abstain. Oh. I don't vote on things unless they're a tie. Understood. Uh, Ryan? Yes. Lori? Aye. Uh, Michael, oh, right, Michael's absent. Uh, Tyler? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, uh, Kevin? Yes. Melinda? Uh, Melinda? She's still on? I uh, don't see her. Absent. Uh, Pablo? Yes. Alan? Absent. Uh, me absent. Cody? Yes. Jim? Yes. Debbie? Debbie? Right here. We lost Debbie. Okay, absent. James? Yes. Jehan? Yes. We uh, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, yes. And uh, what is it? One, two, one abstention. Uh, six, six absent. Uh, motion passes. Thank you, Jose. <clears throat> now we're going to move to the next section of the agenda. Uh, Ryan, do you want to? Uh... Thank you. Uh, for planning and land use, we have. I, I misspoke. I need to do an ex parte communication. Although it was just an email, it was communication from uh, uh, officers of the uh, Luma Lofts uh, building related to the 1130 project. So I just want to go on record on that. Thank you. And I've had external communications, ex parte communications with all of the applicants, uh, just in my normal course of business as the head of planning and land use committee. I, I have, I've have had expert communication from residents uh, of all the buildings involved. With what case? With the Luma. Um, with Hope Street, with 1130 Hope. That's the case, it's 1130 Hope. Exactly, yes? sorry. I'm... It's okay. Okay, you get it. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other ex parte communications? Great. Uh, typically, the way we've done this in the past is if there's anybody who'd like to pull an item for recusal or pull an item because they wanted to discuss it, we can do that. And then we can vote for the rest of the items um, uh, uh, basically as under consent or as a bulk. Is there anybody who would like to pull one of the items? I believe, Patty, you have your hand up. Yes, if you look in your package, you'll find that there are quite a few letters from people having to do with this. Therefore, there is going to be public comment that would con that would be considered public comment. You should look at all of the information, and because of that, it needs to be pulled. That's for item number two, correct? 1130. Yeah, that's for item number two. 
But what I'm saying is for the other items, if, if nobody has any letters or public comment on items one, uh, three, and four, we can vote on those as a group. Is there anybody on the board who would like to pull one of those items? Sean, do you have a comment? I don't believe we've opened up public comment, but your hand um, has been up. No, you just asked the board. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Hi there. Um, this is Sean Smith. Um, you know, looking at, you know, looking at, let me get to the right page. Sean, sorry. Is it relating to these four items? Yes, it is. And so regarding, let me get to the right page. My apology. Uh, um, so 17 2 on 1130 South Hope. That, that um, one's being pulled already. What's that? That Thank one is already being pulled. You have okay. it. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the wrong thing. So, uh, yes, we should pull it. That's being pulled, yes. So, not really. All not the other ones that. are amazing and great. Okay, Sean, sorry. Can somebody mute Sean? I don't have any power. You to... have comment on that, so when I, you have, I'll bring you on on when yeah. the item is in. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So can we just? Uh, I'll make a motion then to approve items seventeen one, seventeen three, and seventeen four as a group. Second. Thank you, Claudia, for seconding that. Move, Anybody move. on the Second. committee have any? Yeah. Um, any further discussion from the board? Any questions on the? items that are going together hearing none let's this allows us to go the abstention of opposition uh or in favor of approach right uh point of order public comment sorry oh public comment sorry uh any further public comment on the items that are being moved forward together we are holding oh. 11 30. I only have Sean's hand up, but I'm just gonna ask him. Uh, Sean, is your comment regarding oh, the three sorry, items that, or that number two? Was still, uh, sorry, uh, that was regarding the other three. Okay. That All were right. good, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So no there is no more public comment. Okay, then uh, let's- All right, vote. we have a motion, we have a second, the vote's on the table, we finished public comment. There was no committee comments. Let's, let's hold the vote. I've are there any abstentions? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, all those are uh, abstaining. Please indicate now. Abstaining from this group of items from planning. I see none. Abstaining. Anyone opposed to these three items? I see no one abstaining. Or excuse me, no one opposed. <clears throat> uh, therefore. The rest are in favor, so those items pass. Great. Now Going back to item number two, uh, do you mind if I just introduce the item and then we can bring it up for public comment and then discussion? Uh, it should have a motion in the form of a motion before we get into discussion. So let me read the case number and the information, then we can create a motion. The case number is ZA 2020-3656 TDR ZAA RDPA RDP SPR. Project location is 1130 South Hope Street. It's a hotel development project. The new construction use and maintenance of an 11 story, 61,310 square foot hotel, consisting of 144 guest rooms, 378 square feet of ground floor retail space, and 56 on site parking spaces. The request that we were uh, asked to consider, and it's very specific as to exactly what the request was, is number one, a transfer development rights to permit floor area of 14,336 square feet. Uh, including public benefits to be provided. Number two, a zoning administrator's adjustment to permit a reduction in the southerly side side yard to zero feet instead of the 14 feet for an 11 story that would be required under the zone. The last one is site plan review um, for, to permit the construction of 144 guest room hotel with 378 square feet and ground floor retail uses. Uh, and then the motion also includes certain uh, stipulations that we conditions that we basically put on uh, a lot of these projects which is standard uh, number one applicant will maintain pedestrian access if the sidewalk is temporarily closed during construction number two applicant will ensure any temporary walkway is covered due to construction or well lit at all hours number three impacts to adjacent properties during construction are minimized to the greatest extent feasible 
Number four, developer works with residents of neighboring buildings to reduce visual impacts. Number five, all mechanical equipment in the rooftop is concealed to prevent visual obstructions and enclose the and prevent noise uh, from impacting neighboring properties. And the final requirement is 24 hour security is implemented at the street level. Also ground floor windows will retain transparency at all times to allow for eyes on the street and pedestrian safety. Having said that, um, I, I believe we should open it to public comment before we, we also do have the presenters here. Um, and I, I believe they might have an update on this as well. So Rick, I'll, I'll allow you to take it from there. Uh, the present, who's here? Sorry, I was, I think still hanging. The presenter, the presenter is Dana Sales. Uh, I have 11 whole HOA wise. Okay. Yeah, Got the it. presenter though is Dana Sales, but All right, if you'd like to do it. public comment first, uh, you can do that as well. Let's but presenters, I think so these people have been waiting, so let's at least try to okay. move. Okay, we start with Dana. Dana Sales. Uh, hi. Good evening. I'd actually like to wait to the end if possible. Uh, I, I think we'd like to hear what's up. We, we don't have a presentation. We were advised as such. This is our second time back here. We were be we were here in front of the board. Some of you were here, some were not back in October. We were sent back to land use to go work through things. As a point of information, we've actually had a supported vote from the land use committee now twice. And so this is back in front of you for a final consideration. Um, all of the comments you're going to hear tonight have been heard multiple times in many meetings. And I think we'd like to reserve any final comments. I also have the owner here tonight until after public comment so we can answer questions for this board. So we feel like we get a fair opportunity to explain anything that might come up in public comment. I'll go for that. Uh, Thank I do. You. Okay, I have Sean. Go ahead. Hi there. Uh, this is Sean Smith. Um, you know, we're all about adding uh, development to downtown and creating uh, hotel opportunities. But if anyone's actually walked the site, it's the biggest sliver of a disruption. Um, there's a very vibrant community of... Uh, of uh, residents that live within that area um, that area that that site is so incredibly small so if you're supposed to um, have parking I think it's going to be supposed to be on hydro, tr hydraulic lifts um, that's going to be disruptive um, then you have to consider uber and delivery which is gonna be super disruptive. Um, I've actually never seen um, something that was like, like more strongly opposed by the community than this project. Um, I don't think it's the right thing. I, maybe there could be a land swap, you know, maybe, you know, that could be something that, it's, it, that is explored. And, you know, and also the other, the other aspect of this was like, there was a historic, uh, uh, there was a historic uh, piece that was um, taken down. There was that uh, brick warehouse that was supposed to be a historic uh, piece that was taken down. That was supposed to be implemented into the development, but that was taken down. So um, I, we, we feel that this would be very, very, very disruptive to the community that is already in place. And also you should have bought a long time ago. You should have bought 10 years ago when it would have been easier to work this in, but you're kind of late to the game, Miss Sales. And um, there's already a community in place that is strongly opposed to this. That's it. Thank you. I'm gonna to try to keep people to two minutes on public comment so that we can all Rick, just, just as a point of order, we, de we generally do one minute for item comments, not general public comment. <clears throat> I'm going to start timing people for one minute. Um, 11 HOA Vice President. Can I, can I, sorry, can I make one more point of order with regards to 11 HOA? 
Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you're speaking on behalf of uh, your HOA. What we did for the land use committee is they wanted some extra time, one person to speak on behalf of multiple people. So if there's certain people here that would like to cede their time to the HOA VP, then we'll give you extra time instead of everyone having to repeat each other. So we can do that as well if you'd like. Agreed. Can you guys hear me? Yes. So I just, I almost fell asleep. I'm sorry it took so long to get here. Um, number one, I think you guys have a letter from us. If you have questions about it, I'm happy to answer anything I can. Number two, uh, we are requesting the neighborhood council support for an ad hoc committee of citizens for justice in South Park regarding potential RICO connection on this project with the former councilman. Um, I'm sure you guys understand what's going on there. And for those reasons, we're asking for you to suspend your vote uh, or deny support. And then the thing that you haven't heard that Dana mentioned that you might have, <laughs> or that she thinks that you guys already know, is that there's a potential conflict of interest with one of your pluck committee members who actually moved this motion to support. Uh, uh, <laughs> that person is the chairman of the board of the company that got paid uh, off of this project to remove 38 units of low, extremely low income housing. Uh, I can think of 38 people outside that can absolutely use a roof over their head right now. Um, there's lots of issues with this project. Thank In you, addition well, one minute is up. Thank you, Naira. <clears throat> okay, next person would be Sherry. Hi, this is Sherry Bonsell from Jeffrey Mangles, and I represent the Homeowners Associations of Evo and Luma, who are directly adjacent to the site, to the north and to the east. Um, we oppose this development. We understand that there can be some development on this site, but this project is too large for a 7,800 square foot site. The prior hotel was 44 guest rooms and 96 feet high, this is three times larger. It's 144 guest rooms and 172 feet high. And all of the restrictions that they're asking you to waive for them are because their density is so high and because their height is so high. They're claiming that they can't have the required 15 foot setback on the side. They would be able to do that if they had less hotel rooms and reoriented them. Um, they're claiming that they need you know, additional floor area on the top of their building. If they had just reduced their guest rooms, then they would be able to fit them all on the site. And instead, this 172 foot high building casts a shadow the entire afternoon over the pool and landscape area of Evo and Luma. Thank you, Sherry. That was your one minute. Uh, don't um, the project. Thank you. Peter Klon. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I'd like to just touch on like a very specific point of procedure here. Um, you know, the motion mentions approving the letter of support, but asking the developer to work with residents of neighboring buildings to reduce visual impacts. However, when you read the letter from the neighbors, they say that they asked for that and the developer has provided none and made no effort to work together. Um, it seems to me putting the cart before the horse to provide a letter of support um, when the only leverage the neighborhood council has really is that letter. So it would seem that you would want to withhold that letter uh, until that, that work has been done uh, and then uh, provide that support. Um, you know, this, this is the moment in which you have some power to affect this behavior, uh, much more difficult after you've approved a letter of support. Um, additionally, in regards to the earlier comments about the RICO concerns, I hope more broadly um, that this neighborhood council will seriously look into how it responds. Thank you, Peter. That was your one minute. That was like Huizar. Rian? Thanks. Um, just really quickly, um, to, I guess my concern with this project is obviously the lot size, 7,000 7, 7, plus square feet is a little tight, but I guess the better, the bigger question is what's the use, what's the better use of that lot? Right now it's an info lot that needs to get, needs to get some development instead of, you know, taking weeds. And so I guess the question is if it's gone through multiple committee stages, the neighbor council has an opportunity to be a mediator in this process. So if you do take the choice of tabling this, the neighbor council needs to take a stronger role in mediating, or if not, you have the option of working further down the commission line in order to re remedy these concerns as the project gets further. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Josh. 
Hi, yeah, I wanted to speak in support of this project. Um, I mean, we need more of everything in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, you know, I'm a homeowner and I, I completely sympathize with these guys. They're gonna lose some of their views. Um, the Perla was just built, it's huge in the historic core. It, it took a good chunk of views. We've got more buildings coming, more buildings will happen. If we wanna become a true metropolis here in downtown Los Angeles, we need to approve buildings and not listen to you know, rich homeowners who um, uh, you know, to rich homeowners who who want to stop these projects, um, things need to get built. They they just do. And so, thank you very much. Please support building this project. And I believe that it can be even bigger under the twenty forty plan. So, if you guys don't support this, it's going to just get bigger. I think. So, I'd love you to look into that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Hello. Um, I spoke a little earlier. I actually am a owner and resident and I do face the lot, not directly, but adju uh, somewhat adjacent. Um, I do see the qualms a lot of residents have, other ones here, but I also agree with some of the sentiment that the, a lot of the height and a lot of the other usage is either pretty reasonable or just ex explicitly allowed. Um, the HOA did, uh, was against the previous shorter development, so there's some, to some extent, consider whether you're just going to be putting this back to be perpetually, uh, perpetually uh, fought against versus trying to push for more collaboration. I just hope to see something there. That's all. Thank you. Julie? Thank you. Um, Dana, you know, it really bothers me when we come to these meetings and you are bored and disgusted that we've act asked you to come back time and time again. But it suddenly came to my attention that the city of Los Angeles is going to suspend some parking requirements. And you guys have made an awful lot of fuss about this hydraulic lift and the parking entrance and whatever, when really it's just a staged excuse for having several more floors in your hotel. So I think that there's a lot of like smoke screens here and the profitability of the hotel is already questionable. The fact is that you're going to uh, take away $150,000 per unit of quote, rich homeowners, which equates to $97 million in lost equity in a market that's going to be declining based on all the foreclosures that are gonna come on the market in downtown Los Angeles. So I think, that you're only thinking about your own pockets. You don't live down here. You don't know what we're going through. And I think that um, your uh, lack of empathy is completely misplaced. Thank you, Julie. Peter Tomases. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, it's getting late, so I'll, I'll make my comments brief. Uh, my name is Peter Tomases and I'm a 14 year resident of South Park and the president of the Luma Building Homeowners Association. Uh, I won't reiterate some of the concerns from the other commenters and instead just wanna say that, you know, the opposition to this hotel is the first time that the board of directors from Luma, Evo, 11 and the 1050 buildings have coalesced to oppose a project. That's almost a thousand homeowners. We have previously supported and will continue to support new development in South Park. I'm personally looking forward to the new AEG hotel as well as the proper hotel, which uh, I believe opens next month. Again, we want new development. We want new amenities in South Park, uh, new stores, restaurants and bars and hotels we can be proud of. But this hotel uh, by a first time ho hotel builder just doesn't fit with the neighborhood. Also the developer mentioned an 11 story building, but it's 172 feet. Thank you, Peter. That was your one minute. Michael? Uh, it's actually Patty. Michael went to bed hours ago. Uh, I'm Patty Gagan. I live at all Luma. Right. There are three homeowners associations that all have adopted a position to oppose this project. As Peter mentioned, over 700 homes. Um, we oppose it because it doesn't comply with the downtown design guidelines. We have fire life safety concerns. We're concerned about noise from from the hotel and from the construction. We're concerned about alley congestion and alley safety for vehicles and pedestrians. We're concerned about construction impacts, garage operations and possible breakdowns. We're concerned about inadequate on-site staffing 
and we don't believe it provides an adequate benefit to South Park in exchange for the concessions that are being requested. The project is too big, too much, and too close to our homes. Thank you, Patty. Marty? Yes, uh, I'm Marty. I have been an owner of South Park for the All last right. 10 plus years. I'm currently on two boards in South Park. In my previous life, I was CEO of a mid-sized uh, consumer, consumer electronic company. And I learned early in my career that it's very, very important to listen to your employees. In your case, we'll call them uh, constituents. And there's never been in my 10 years, and it's been echoed over and over again, the adamant support against this project. As my employees, they lived the life, they understood it, even as an, a CEO, they understood it better than I did. So I ask you to listen, please listen to the constituents and the people that are living here and, and living it every day. They know more than you, trust me. This project is not the right time, the right place, or the right project for that piece of property. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Paul Balkley. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Paul Buckley. I live in uh, 11, and I just want to respond to comments about um, the, the rich homeowners who live in this neighborhood. Um, I think that uh, this could be easily um, presented as a clash of self-interest between the people who live here and a developer that wants to make a bunch of money, but it's more than that. And I think that we are well within our rights to say that if we're gonna transfer $97 million out of our pockets and into the pockets of somebody building a building, that we should have an opportunity to use what leverage we have to say what that building should be. And early in this meeting, we were talking about a homelessness crisis. We were talking about, you know, generally we have a supply crisis in housing and a hotel is not it. We, we should be allowed to say, what we think we want that loss of value to us to go towards for the benefit of the community in the neighborhood and for Los Angeles as a whole. And this project is unequivocally not the answer. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Sean? Yeah, hi. Um, I just want to echo- Point, the point of order, Sean, you spoke on this item. That have already voiced opposition against this project. Marty's I want to echo the thousands of people that are against this project. And that's the point of order. Thank you, Sean. Joel Rank. Joel, can you hear us? I can. Uh, I'd like to cede my time to Sherry Bonstell. Sherry, Sh Sherry, can you, Sherry already spoke. Sherry, can you put your hands up? There you go. Go ahead. Hi, this is Sherry again. Um, I want to say that specifically, there are some very specific um, issues with this project that have already been addressed. Um, but the main one is the use of that alley. That alley is a primary, uh, it's primary for the three homeowners associations that exit out of it every day that have um, deliveries every day. It's full of people and this automatic car garage is going to have a queue in that alley blocking the trucks for you know, the entire day. It's gonna take five minutes at least per person to get somebody into that garage. It's an unmanned garage um, and it's just gonna cause a nightmare. Um, and there's been no resolution in terms of redesigning it, making it ADA accessible or having deliveries that could be accessible off of that driveway either. Um, so we're asking you to consider very specifically that this is a project that is way too small for the site, way too large for this small site. Thank you, um, Sherry. Thank you. Uh, that was public comment. Uh, I'm going to go back to Dana. I should raise my hand after you to give it a Dana, yeah. can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, yes. can you? Yes, I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, at the last executive board meeting, we were not given the opportunity to respond to some of the comments 
Um, I'm going to start on a personal note. It's 1110 at night. I have not said anything about a single person individually on this call. And I was called out personally four times. That is not what this is about. You are here. Somehow developers are not stakeholders. People that own property are not stakeholders. People that do work in downtown are not stakeholders. The only stakeholders seem to be people that live there. That's not true. There's a lot of us collectively that work and try to make downtown what it is. It's not just people that work there. There were a lot of things that were said to you tonight. Um, we were sent back, right? This was already sent back from the board for reconsideration to land use. The notion that this should be continued and held was already done once in October. And since then, we met with the collective group of the HOAs three times. We have worked on operational restrictions. We've worked on rooftop restrictions. We have redesigned the building. We have put together a construction plan. We put together an operations plan. We have put things on the table in terms of how to reduce the size of the building. Most have been rejected or not considered, or we're still in consideration. The notion that we have done nothing is completely false and is completely disingenuous. We have tried and tried to do what we can, but ultimately, and particularly for some of you that are new on the board, at some point in development, you're gonna agree to disagree. What we have in front of you, and unfortunately, you don't have the benefit of having us done our entire presentation and seeing the building and seeing the project and seeing what we put together. Um, again, the history of this site is such that there was a hotel already approved here. It was completely opposed by everyone in these buildings. There is a hotel directly across the street on Grand called the Desmond that was approved in December that was completely opposed by all of these people with the exact same request that we have that was supported by D-Link by both the land use committee and the board. There is nothing different about what we are proposing that you see anywhere else in downtown. And all we're asking for is the same general consideration that other projects are given. The collective projects of 11 and Luma have a series of variances and deviations from the municipal code that are larger than any project that I have seen and I do this for a living. They enjoy the rights of reduced setbacks and increased height and reduced parking and all of these things that they're accusing us of cheating the code for. And it's just not true. We are asking for essentially a building that could be built by right under density bonus, by right under the TOC ordinance, would be completely by right with no entitlements under the DTLA 2040 plan. It is a, a time in which the greater city of Los Angeles is recognizing that there is a package of rights that most projects get in downtown and that's all we're asking for, to do a limited service hotel because the prior project had a rooftop bar and a lounge and a restaurant that was had nuisance issues. And the applicant who are also on the phone, and I'm trying to see if Brian wants to say anything, um, made a decision very early in this process to eliminate what we thought were nuisance issues. To say that we're not allowed to take driveway access off a public alley in downtown LA is crazy. DOT won't let us access from anywhere else. We don't have a choice, right? Tell us we don't have to provide parking. Great, happy to not provide parking, but we're stuck with certain code considerations. There's things that we have to do. We have to collect trash. We have to load. We have to have utilities just like every other building. And if it's not this building, something else will go there. And something else will go there that will probably be larger because the entitlements are such and the land use controls are such that you can build a bigger building today with a lot less hassle than this because a residential development could be a lot larger than what we're asking for. This was vetted by the land use committee twice, by your land use committee twice. It was approved by the land use committee twice. The executive board sent us back to go work with the community and we did whatever we could, all of which we presented to the land use committee that hopefully you've had the benefit of seeing because we don't have the ability to show it to you all tonight. And all we're asking is that you trust the work that was done by your committee 
and su allow us to move forward with our process and support it. <clears throat> I will answer yeah. any President, questions for clarification, that any board has. Are we, do we do questions now what? or during our speaking time? Oh. From what I understand. Sorry, I have people hands up uh, from the Yeah, board. no, I'm just asking a question for so I know what order. Uh, we will take. Uh, we need to finish the comment on this issue. Once the comment is done, then it comes to board comments. Right. We'll discuss amongst ourselves. If we have questions for the applicants, we can ask them directly. And then after that, we will put a motion forward and take a vote. Or we have a motion. We'll put a motion forward and take a vote. Thank you. So, Claudia. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say that this is a project that I've heard from a lot of people. I physically have gone to the site. Claudia, I'm, I'm so sorry. Before before you call on Claudia, it sounds like there are more public comments. We have to finish public comment first. Okay. Well, out of five, four of them already spoke. I'm just and gonna call on the person who didn't. Yeah. Thank you for catching um, me. Two of them, Dennis, Dennis Fried. It's Freed. Free, sorry thank about that. Okay, thank you for letting me speak. Uh, I'm the president of the uh, 11 HOA. I would just um, like to speak out in support of all the negative comments that have been made here. I would like to say to Dana, uh, or would like to say to you that um, it is patently untrue that either 11 Luma or Evo were against the previous hotel that was gonna be built there or the Desmond building that is proposed. Um, we are not against any kind of development in downtown Los Angeles that is right for the site. This is a 50 foot wide site that cannot support a hotel that's been proposed. And I think people have made that very clear. I think Marty spoke very eloquently about the fact that there's a thousand homeowners that surround this site that are against this for only one reason and one reason only. And that is because it is too big for that parcel of land. It originally, that site was supposed to be part of a park that was gonna go with the piece next door. The developer, I've, I've owned my unit for 15 years since the original 11 building was built. The original design for that parcel was part of a park. And there was uh, Thank not you, enough. Dennis. That was your one minute. You know, you gave the developer five minutes. I timed it. And you've given only all of us one minute. I think it's um, disingenuous to cut the public comment off when you're giving the applicant as much time as you're giving them. Dennis, sounds like you're done. <clears throat> and we have heard numerous comments I have one more public comment. Okay. Let's go with it. Uh, Johnny. Yes, my name is Johnny and uh, I am for this development. Um, if it's already been said that uh, Pluck has already said yes to it twice, then obviously they've reviewed stuff. They've, re they've reviewed what has been presented to them. And it sounds like people around just don't want an another building next to them and it's like okay it's gonna obstruct my view okay it's downtown la what do you expect like that's what downtown la is supposed to be that's what it's being right now it's being built to have big buildings if you look around all you see is new development of big buildings you know that's crazy. what's going on well, so i don't understand yeah, what the big fuss is about yeah, about so having good. another yeah. big building yeah. there like if there has um i mean i don't i hear someone whispering in the background that's kind of rude but anyway um but yeah i'm for this for this development it's going to bring jobs it's going to bring uh community wealth having workers there and it, it just seems like all these other people are just jealous if there's going to be a building there obstructing your view. Thank you, it's Johnny. Like, that okay. was your one minute. Thank you. Uh, we have three more hands up, but um, each one of them, they already spoke. <clears throat> then then uh, let's, let's move forward. If people have had a chance to speak, uh, as long as there isn't anyone who hasn't had a chance to speak, that's what I'm interested in. Um, well, there is two people now. That haven't spoken? 
He has one actually down to one. Okay. Uh, Brian, go ahead. You have a minute. Hi, uh, thank you again for considering our project. I'm one of the developers. Uh, obviously many of the things that have been said tonight we've heard before. We've been working with Sherry, even though she didn't mention it to you guys. We've, we've had our council reach out and talk to Sherry multiple times. We've made multiple proposals of ways to lessen the impact of the building, including removing parking. Uh, which would not only shorten the building below 150 feet, but would also uh, reduce all the concerns with congestion in the alleys. Interesting that that was not brought up at all. Uh, further, what we are proposing is going to be very beneficial for downtown as downtown needs a, a multitude of different product types in hotel and everything else. Uh, and as it was already mentioned, we're really no different, in, you know, in ways from- Thank you, Brian. That was your one minute. Thank you. Okay, okay that was it. Uh, should we close public comments? Yes, public comments are now closed. Okay, let's move to board. I have a question though, Rick. Do we have a motion on the table? In a second? Uh, you had presented a motion, I believe. <clears throat> It's a little foggy, I must admit. Uh, John, what's the, uh, what do your notes show? Uh, were... No, there's no motion on the table yet. Yeah. So just, <clears throat> just as a point of order, technically I'm the one to make the motion. Yes. Uh, and, and technically I... none of this should have happened until the motion was on the table. So can right. someone make a motion so we can start discussion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Somebody second it, please. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and okay. second. Okay. Uh, Rick, would you like me to give a little background on what happened at Pluck? Yes, yes. I have a Good question idea. Sure. for Ryan. Yeah. So my yeah. question is, anybody voted against it at Pluck or abstained? Patty voted against it. I abstained. Um, I have to look at the exact, I think we have a vote count here. Yeah. There were two abstentions. I abstained, Patty said no. I think maybe Audrey also abstained. I don't hold me to that. Um, and then we had three yeses. Okay, so um, if uh, it's okay, I would like to hear from Patty, her reasons, since she heard through the whole thing, why, why was this uh, a no-go for her? Yep, I'm happy to do that. I feel that the, it's extremely wrong for the, for the area and we are representing large groups of people and there are a whole bunch of people who do not think that this is appropriate for their neighborhood. My objections have to do with the way it fits into the neighborhood, what it's doing on that lot, the whole thing of going wall to wall on the lot and not taking into consideration the people's needs for the alleyway. And besides that, we've got a 300 and something square foot retail in the front. They're saying that it will give us eyes on the street and lights on the street, which is what we always want. And yet, how can 325 square feet do much of anything that's going to bring a lot of people through? Most likely it'll become a little place where you can buy your toothbrush and toothpaste if you forgot to bring it with you in your suitcase. It's wrong for the neighborhood. The neighbors, I've never seen so many neighbors upset about anything. This isn't about their views. This isn't about any of the petty stuff that we hear sometimes. This is for real. They really don't want it. I voted no, I'm still voting no. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Who was next with their hand up? Would you like me to well, yeah. you do the little background or are you okay? Yeah, let me just give you a very short background. So as they mentioned, this has gone to plug twice. It's come before us twice. This is uh, kind of the nuance of, of our committee is that we try to maintain objectivity and a lot of the conversations centered around this. This project is 100% by right based on DTLA 2040. So once the new zoning code comes in, they won't even be able to come in front of us. We want to use the opportunity to say, okay, everything they're asking for is stuff that people have asked for in the past. Um, it comes down to the idea that the neighbors don't want their views blocked, plain and simple. Um, having said that, views are not a protected class under CEQA. It's not protected uh, you know, by this process technically. Um, and the other concern has been, you know, 
with everything we do, we're setting a precedent. As more and more of these large mega developments, I mean, we've, we've basically seen all of them, the big block to block properties, the corner properties, a lot of that stuff sort of been developed. And we're really starting to get into the territory now that a lot of these infill sites are going to have to get developed. It's just a lot of sites that are similar size in between two existing buildings. And we're going to have to find a way to live with it if we're going to really grow downtown, which is what we want to do. If we want integration, if we want low income housing, if we want, you know, uh, more access to housing, all that kind of stuff. I mean, we're going to have to live with growth, even though this isn't housing. So maintaining that objectivity, the biggest issue had become working with the neighbors. From what we gathered based on comments and the presentation, the developer, uh, as they mentioned, offered things like, do you want windows and glazing facing your units or do you want nobody looking into your unit? They said, we don't want anyone looking to the unit, fine. So they put a, you know, basically an empty wall. He said, do you want artists and you know, art or whatever on the wall? The developer said, sure, we'll put art on the wall if you want art on the wall. Um, they talked about mechanical issues and sound on the roof. So they, we, that's why we purposely put in there, all their mechanical 100% is gonna be completely closed and covered so that's, and soundproof. So no sound or visually, it won't affect the, the neighbors next door. They also said that they're not gonna have any kind of f &B or bar on the roof, which was a contention, I guess, with a previous entitlement um, because of noise and all that kind of stuff. So they took that away. They purposely made this a limited service hotel because they didn't want, you know, I don't know, bad activity or whatever here. They wanted it to be more limited service for people working there for a week or two. Um, as they mentioned, they were offering to even take away the parking to basically come below the height. So at that point, they wouldn't even need any kind of approval for increased height. Um, I think that's basically what everything centered around. Having said all that, like I said, I generally, I'm, it's not like this scenario on the board where I don't vote as the head of planning and then use. I generally will vote. I abstain because at a certain point, it becomes a gray area of what is our role here. Are we here to be subjective? Are we here to be objective? How can we be fair to both the homeowners and to the developers as well? Um, and it's not for us to say, you know, this should be a park or this should be this or this should be that. That's really, that's, that's not really appropriate. If a developer comes with us, comes to us with a project that he wants to do, we can't say, you know what, we don't want a hotel here. We want a, you know, hospital here. It's, it's really not for us to say. Um, what else can I say? Uh, and then I believe there was some issue about uh, RICO or something like that. I mean, all of that has been completely litigated and this developer was not involved in any of that. Um, it's a completely new owner, new developer. Uh, so that we really didn't find to be an issue as well. Um, open to any questions. Obviously I am and I'm sure Dana is also waiting in the sideline. Well, yeah, thank you. All right, so I've been to the site um, more than three times and I have outreach to many stakeholders from the buildings and I've watched the presentation. I was actually watching that committee meeting and um, I have to say one thing and uh, first I have to say that I'm, I'm leaning towards against this project and then I'm gonna tell you the things that I think that the developer has done that I thought it was good and I think just to give credit to the developer and operator of this project is that, you know, it, did, it does come to a point where some people are like, oh, we don't want balconies because we don't want people, we don't want windows facing us. But then the same people don't want also just a plain wall. So it's like, it's hard to please everybody. I get that. Being that I've been to the site, it is so small. Great project, wrong place to me. Um, the alley, if I can give you guys kind of like a, a, a imaginary view of it, the alley, it comes into a T, right? So part of it, part of the alley is public, but part of it is private. So the public access is really just one way. So imagine going one way and coming back. The other access to the alley actually belongs, I think, definitely to one of the buildings. I don't, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, Luma or the other one. Um, so the problem is that even with the hydraulics that they are putting to accommodate the, the staging, you know, there's, there's gonna be, I think it's super creative. There's gonna be a staging room uh, for the car to go up in the hydraulics. You know, it's just not enough space. That alley has 
the deliveries and the trash. And yes, they should have right, whoever is going in there should have right to that alley. And it, it's just, there's no room. There's no room to add any more movement towards that alley. Um, I don't think that we are allowed to, well, not allowed, just scratch that word. I don't think that, a, like Ryan, I don't believe that it, it is really our place to say, oh, a hospital should go here or this should be here. Even though I'm a big fan of strategic planning and a strategic, strategic growth, I do have to say, um, there are other possibilities that, and Brian, I'm so sorry that, that uh, I'm going to say this, but it would be like a win-win if someone reached out to the real estate, uh, the CEO of real estate development for the county and just did a land swap. You know, the lot has been assessed at just over 2 million. You know, it, this is such an easy thing, fix. Like, pick another uh Funny though, but that, it's not our place to tell somebody that they have to sell their property. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that they have to. I'm not even. I'm, I'm just saying there are options that people could think outside the table, and. Uh, but that's not our purview right now, and I don't, I don't know how appropriate that is for us to like suggest that somebody has to sell their land to the county or whatever. I mean, if you want to I'm buy not, it, I'm you know. not. I'm not saying that they, they have to do whatever they want to do with it. I'm just saying that this project is just. I can't see it physically working. I just can't see well, it. We're getting late. I think you've made your point. If I could move on, if that's okay. Um, who's next, Naira? I, I, I'm going to keep this brief because I know everyone is exhausted and this is unusually long. I, 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 we have not had a meeting that was this long before. So um, I think we're, it's a, I, I, I sympathize with the property owners surrounding the project. I really do. And I, if I was in this situation, I probably would feel the same way they do. The problem, the thing, the, the, the problem that I'm trying to grapple with is with what, what, what Ryan just said a few minutes ago, it's a slippery slope. We're, we're, we're now at a point in downtown where we have these, these infill properties that are going to be developed and people are gonna be pissed off about any of these projects that are coming in because we've now built up downtown to a point where you're going to have infill pro uh, projects in between the properties that have already been developed. So you're gonna have people that are gonna be upset about views, about, about shadows, about uh, congestion, about, about literally a plethora of things. So, um, I think we have to be very careful about what we decide here because he, it's going to set a precedent in the future for, for anything else that goes in. Um, and, you know, this is not Encino. This is not Van Nuys. This is downtown Los Angeles. This is designed literally to be a dense area of development. That's the whole purpose of downtown, the way that we built it. So um, I, I'm kind of leaning to abstaining if we have to make a vote on it tonight. I would have preferred if the board had an opportunity because we're the ones making the decision to visit the site and actually see it and get a, like a, 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 a kind of a ground's eye view of, of the site. Um, I didn't, I've, I've only learned recently about the, the, the you know, because we're dealing with all different kinds of issues on the board, right? Um, I've only learned about how hotly this is contested recently because this has not been on my radar as much as maybe others in, on the board has. So um, that's, that's really, you know, I, I would love to be able to visit this site and actually see it in person before I make an actual decision, yes or no. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Lori? Um, I, I, I was gonna ask Dana a question about the parking access, but then I, I realized that it really didn't matter because my, my thoughts on the process were that, um, uh, that uh, to Ryan's point about like precedent and how we think about these things, um, I, I I didn't see anything in the letter, and and it wasn't clarified. It wasn't clarified in the applicant's materials, nor did I see anything in our letter actually conditioning um, uh, manpower for the automated parking system here, and. Um, I was in another forum today where we were being introduced to new projects. This is the third automated parking project that I've seen, you know, 
you know, had a discussion about just today. And I, I don't think it's, it's far from going to be the last. And I think that um, there is, is reason to think about precedent that particularly for um, non-residential properties uh, where the users are, you know, are, um, are not, you know, used to equipment that um, regardless of whether the applicant says they are or are not going to have staff, that that start to become a, a baseline requirement that we put in as a condition that automated parking systems, you know, still have a staff. Um, and so I, I would suggest a friendly amendment to the motion to add a requirement for uh, staffing as appropriate for the automated parking system. Thank you, Lori. Michelle? Thank you. Uh, just to be quick about this, I wanted to say I'm excited about a setting precedent, um, specifically to challenge the notion that growth and development in downtown LA is more impactful when it provides high cost and elitist lodging solutions. So I appreciate us taking the time to thoroughly discuss this. And um, I appreciate everybody staying on so late um, as we discuss this. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Uh, yeah, just a couple quick things. Um, one, I just wanted to make a note um, for the record that even though it has gone to Pluck Committee twice, um, the last time it came out, it only got three votes. So that is not the majority um, of the 10 or 11 person committee. So I think we need to be careful about, um, you know, claiming that it has the full support of Plum. It has a support of a small, um, not even a majority. Um, I think the other thing that wasn't clear to me from all the materials I read about the project is um, what what is the community benefit um, of this building? You know, what is it bringing to the area that um, the residents are clamoring for? And, you know, the, the vast, vast majority of, uh, you know, what I've heard from the community seems to be in opposition of this project. And um, it's hard, for, and it also feels like there's quite a number of questions that have not been addressed by the 1111 um, HOA. So uh, a couple of things I'm thinking about as I consider this motion. Kevin, uh, if I may answer or at least provide a little bit of color, because definitely that came up, the idea of like, is this a community benefit? How is it a community benefit? I don't think that you're going to get a call today as an attendee of a businessman in Minnesota who's coming in for a convention center conference in 2022 to come and say, we really need this community benefit. I think the way we look at it is, number one, the taxes that are generated, hotel taxes, I mean, it funds our downtown, it funds our convention center, it funds our homeless housing, it funds everything. Number two, the what they're proposing, if I understand correctly, is a limited service, more extended stay, suite style hotel. Um, it's also what we liked about the project, which I hadn't mentioned before because I didn't think it was relevant. Uh, the units are basically micro apartments. And so this is a project that easily could be converted just through a simple, um, like new uh, certificate of occupancy to become like a micro unit dwelling project. Um, so beyond that, listen, the community benefit 100%, we have to consider all community benefits. I think it's a little bit easier when we're working on a, you know, a homeless housing shelter or a apartment building that provides 10% or 30% or whatever of affordable housing. I think it's a more holistic benefit that something like this provides that that was sort of the discussion is like, yeah, maybe this on itself, everyone's not dying to come stay at this hotel. This is not going to be, you know, the plaza or whatever, but there is a benefit to the downtown community of having the additional hotel rooms. We're very, very under built for hotel rooms right now, just based on our demand for the convention center. Um, I don't know what the exact goal is, but there definitely is a goal to very, very much bump the hotel rooms in downtown. That is one benefit. So whatever, take that for whatever it's worth. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Sure, so I really, really want to support this project, not seeing all the previous, previous presentations and materials and understanding the design, it's hard for me to fully understand the project. That being said, I, I do believe in it wanting, it, it being really important to kind of set a precedent for the city and for downtown. Um, that being said, I was hoping if Ryan or someone could answer the question about the one legitimate sounding concern I had, which was access to the adjacent buildings through the alley and being blocked by cars that were waiting for the um, automated parking. Lori brought that up. So if you had any more information about that. 
I'm not I'm not going to be the advocate for the project. I would hope that Dana can answer that. Uh, Ryan, can I ask you a question? I forgot to ask when sure. I was at. Uh, my important question is, there was a building there previously. Do you know the circumstances on how and why that building was torn down? I do not. And I just want to be very clear. Everything that I'm telling you guys is just trying to be informative. I'm not here advocating for anything on one side or the other. Um, I know it might sound like I am, but I'm not. Uh, Dana, would you like to answer Tony's question and also Jim's question? Naira, maybe you could. Yes, give me a second. Dana, can you hear us? I can, can you hear me? Oh, yes, perfectly. Okay, let me, uh, let me actually take the second question first about the existing building, just to clear up any facts. So this building was um, prior, previously an SRO. It was subject to what's called the Wigan Settlement, which was a CRA kind of regulated SRO. Um, it had been vacated in the 90s and was sitting vacant for many, many years. Um, when the prior, it had also been red tagged by building and safety for um, life safety issues for about a decade before the prior project was proposed back in 2000, I think back in 2012, and it was ultimately approved back in 2014 for a new hotel project, which proposed at the time adaptive reuse of the existing building and then new construction of several floors above it. Um, that development because of the market or whatever, I wasn't, none of us were involved. It was a prior owner. Um, those entitlements expired. Building and safety continued to order the building to be demolished for life safety purposes. The owner had actually been, had, a, had an agreement with the fire department for Los Angeles where they were practicing setting, setting fires in the building um, as training, a training ground. And building and safety required the building to be demolished. Um, as part of the prior agreement, contrary to what anybody here says, there was an agreement that was made um, for an in lieu fee to satisfy the removal of those units um, in accordance with the Wiggins ag agreement. There's a settlement agreement where there was money paid to Skid Row Housing Trust for the preservation and um, creation of additional affordable housing units in greater downtown. We have a letter from CRA that says all of the replacement housing requirements were satisfied, which then allowed the housing department to clear all of the demolition permits. There's claims from that you probably have that says that it was done inappropriately. We can provide you all the paperwork. There's legal paperwork. All of the in lieu fees were paid. The building was demolished in 2018 because it was ordered to be demolished by the Department of Building and Safety for fire and life safety issues. So it's been sitting vacant for two years um, and Brian came in and bought the property after it had been demolished. They had nothing to do with anything that happened before. So this is entirely new and they're completely disassociated with anything from before and the prior owners are gone and it's been sitting vacant for three years. So that's the first issue. With regard to um, access, we actually have a pretty extensive, hopefully it's in your packages, um, access and circulation plan where we have provided turning radii and queuing information on the plan. Um, there's two points of access in the automated parking garage. There's an alley to the north and an alley to the east because we're surrounded by two public alleys um, where you can access the garage and the elevator, car elevator from two points. We originally only had an access at the rear of the building off the eastern alley. And as part of our conversations, we actually have a convertible loading zone, which actually acts for one as commercial loading zone for the limited, you know, twice a week deliveries that this hotel might have. But it also provides an on-site queuing opportunity into the garage if a car needed to wait, et cetera. And we went through a very extensive kind of explanation of that. Um, it's a little bit hard to explain this without a visual. So I hope it's making a little bit of sense. I also wanna point out one thing. There's a little bit of alley congestion. The alley was vacated in order to create 11 and Luma and their garage. The alley used to go north south all the way out to 11th street and it was vacated and rerouted for the creation of that project. So it doesn't have the same north south configuration that other um, alleys in the city have. 
not because anybody created that other than that project. So there are circumstances that are a little bit misleading about why it's congested. Um, but the reality is we are being required by the Department of Transportation to take all access off of a public alley, which is a city street and all of the properties north, south, you know, east and west have the right to use that for all of their servicing. And that's all we're asking to do. I hope I Thank answered you, that. Thank any, you. Other, any other questions from the board? Because uh, I think. My, I have a question. Do we have quorum? Yes, we do. Quorum is 13. We have 15. Okay. <clears throat> so. You know, it is not the custom of the president to vote per our uh, standing rules, <clears throat> but I walked this property all and I just want to use the occasion to say, I just don't have a good gut feel on it. I joined with Patty if I were on the what committee of voting no, but I wasn't. <clears throat> it just, sometimes there are things they're trying to put into the wrong place. And, and this one has come back a couple of times. And you know the first mistake you made, as CEO almost told me, is 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 always the one you keep living with. <clears throat> I think there's there's been due diligence on, on this. I have not seen as many letters uh, on a project, so I'm just using this moment to be a little unofficial and weigh in because I'm not going to vote on it unless there's a tie. Ryan, have we covered all the bases? I'd want to make sure. I hope we have. Um, I mean, there's obviously a few people that are, you know, vocal thoughts on this one way or the other. I can't tell what everyone else is thinking, but um, is, listen, it's the nature of this of this committee very specifically is like really just balancing the idea of objectivity and consistency. If you notice, a lot of our conditions they carry through through all the projects, right? Um, you know, zone changes are a very easy thing to to have a subjective opinion on. You're completely changing the use from something that's allowed to something that's not allowed. This is a little bit different and looking at it in comparison to other projects that we've done in the past, they're not asking for really anything out of the ordinary if it wasn't for the fact that there are people next door who don't want a building to block their views. Um, and the question that we have before us basically is, what is the greater good? Is it that we for lack of a better term, are we succumbing to NIMBYism? Or are we, I don't know, I don't know. Um, it's a challenge, it's why I abstained. I generally don't abstain. I usually have pretty strong feelings one way or the other about most things. Um, listen, you've heard a bunch of people who live next door who have issues and we can't, we can't ignore that. Um, at the same time, you know, we, we really do want to be objective. If this was a, a woman's shelter or if this was something else, would we have the same objections to it? That's at least the way that I look at it. I'm not here to tell somebody what they can build and what they can't build in terms of you know what type of use they want to do. I don't think that's fair. Um, I don't know. This one's a hard one for me, I'll be honest. And like I said, if, if they had just tried to ram this through with no conversation, it would have been a different issue. I think that there were a lot of within reason, a lot of accommodations that were made and conversations that were had. And I think we have to give some some deference to that as well. So that's 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 where I'm gonna leave it. And Rick, if you'd like to, to do the vote, maybe we do a roll call for this time. Uh, let's just uh, a I, reminder, I have an, a friendly amendment on the table. Sorry. That you wanna maintain, um, you wanna man the automated parking? Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay, I, I'm happy to make that amendment. Um, I'll, I'll second. Okay, great. I'm going to okay with both of you, and we can go ahead uh, on the vote. Uh, let's make this one public, uh, not a, the usual approach. So, Jose, are you still with us? Yeah, still here. Could you do a roll call vote on this, please? Uh, sure, no problem. Uh, all right. So, roll call vote. Uh, Claudia? Um. And this, we're voting on the amendment only, correct? Oh, it's a friendly amendment. It can be added without a vote. So we're voting on the motion. We're voting on the motion. Okay, um, then I, I have to vote no. 
Okay, uh, Tony. I'm going to abstain. Okay, uh, Patty. No. Michelle. No. Absent. Naira. No. All right. Ryan. Yes. Uh, Lori. Hi. Uh, that's a yes. All right. Yes. I'm used to more right. formal. <laughs> I and A. Uh, Tyler. Yes. Okay, uh, Kevin. No. Pablo. No. It's absent. Uh, it's absent. Cody. Abstain. Okay, uh, Jim? Yes. Debbie? Uh, oh, right, absent. Uh, James? Yes. Uh, Jehan? No. Okay, and... Seven no's, two abstentions. Five, five yes. Oh, that's right. Uh, for Rick, Rick, uh, you'll be abstaining, right? Or yes, I abstain unless it's a tie. Okay, so that makes it three abstentions. So it's uh, seven no's, three abstentions, uh, five, uh, five uh, in favor. Uh, motion does not pass. Okay. Can I just make one other comment, Richard, now that it's done? Sure. I, obviously, we have issues in terms of the Brown Act and not having a full quorum of the board. Um, yeah. I do encourage all of you at some, not right now, not right now. We have a quorum right now. No, 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 that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying, let, let me finish the sentence. <laughs> we might have an issue in terms of having like a non-scheduled board meeting. So obviously everyone can't come at once, but I really do encourage you for a planning and land use committee meeting um, for each of you just every once in a while to at least try to make a meeting so you understand kind of what goes behind it. Uh, our meetings are pretty technical and very long. And a lot of these guys come with, you know, long presentations of 20 minutes. We can't go through this whole song and dance necessarily with every project for the board meeting, but it really would be helpful for you guys to come see a planning and ladies committee meeting um, at least once. So I, I encourage you all to do it. Uh, Ryan, are the meeting being recorded because we can't have a quorum, so that way we could, you know, watch it later. Yes. Uh, so in regards to that, uh, as I was mentioned, uh, so board members can attend committee meetings, but they'll have to remain as silent observers if you're not a committee member. Uh, so that means that you would not be able to participate. You just be able to watch and, and, and listen to, to what's going on in the committee uh, committee meeting, uh, unless it's a uh, Gen Dyes as a special joint board and committee meeting, which then allows uh, board members to be able to participate, but only the committee takes action. Thank you, Jose. <clears throat> Just one other clarification for everyone. That's why committees cannot have more than six board members on it because that would constitute uh, seven out of 13 uh, enough to pass. So <clears throat> only six committee members, six board members can be on a committee just to follow up on this part of the conversation. All right, we have, uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you everyone who stuck with us tonight. Let me just say this agenda, struggling as after getting elected, I'm gonna look at how we do this different. I don't like long meetings either. 
And I, we still have some items that I just like to uh, move back on to table uh, because I think it's time for everybody to go home. <clears throat> and those are items four, four, five, four and five. I'm just gonna move five on the table also. <clears throat> And the president report, I will be emailing people. So I do not have a president's report on uh, board issues or agenda issues. <clears throat> so could I get a motion to table items four and five? I think those are the only you mean things postpone for me. It? Sorry? Do you mean postpone till the next meeting? Uh, to, to table those, table the items. And then the, uh, the process on tabling is you can figure out when you want to bring them back so you can adjust the flow and what's important. So we tabled the other ones. That's the language. It's not a postpone, it's a table. So a motion to table, can I get someone to do that? I so move. I second it. Hey, does the uh, minute taker have the names of the people who did that? John? I do. Kevin motioned and Tony seconded. All right. Uh, all right. Let, let's uh, do our discussion. Uh, I think we also have to table 18, 19, and 20, don't we? Uh, hold on a sec. Yes, please. We don't have any committees or officers or liaisons yet. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, can I amend my motion then to accommodate those items as well? Yes. Perfect. Uh, and that's a friendly uh, amendment, so everybody's good with that. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Any uh, other discussion on this topic? Hearing none, let's do this. Are there any... Uh, abstentions from the tabling of these items? Any, any votes against tabling them? All in favor? I think we have uh, completed our last item of, of business on this public agenda. And I would just want to thank everyone. I want to reiterate. We have number 22. We have general public comments. Oh, oh, we already did public comments earlier. Uh, we we have also have one at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Twice now. All right, uh, Sean. Sean, can you hear us? Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, Marty. Marty. All right, uh, I'll come back to you also, Rian. Hey guys, I hate to do this, I, but one thing that we need to address is the board vacancy announcements. It just needs to be announced per standing rules and bylaws so that the vacancy process can begin for filling those seats that weren't elected. So just don't forget about that some way or another. Did, Thank you, Rian. Uh, uh, Sean? Oh, oh, there you go. Um, oh, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I think that we did something that makes the downtown community happy. Um, and it's very important to announce um, empty seats um, as they come up and not wait until 90 or 120 days afterwards. And um, that's it. I think that we have a very healthy board. I think that we made all the right decisions tonight. And um, we welcome all the voices. We all want the same things. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I'm going to call on Marty one more. Marty, can you hear us? No answer. I believe we lost them. I have one more, Johnny. 
Yeah, um, I just want to say that everyone that voted for absentee or whatever, like that, like I don't understand why you guys would do that. I mean, that's why you guys are you guys have the seat that you guys have, so you can make decisions either yay or nay. It's like so. Then what's the point on you sitting on that seat if you're not going to make a, an actual decision on something that's going to benefit the community or not? Like so, you, you this whole time, all these hours here so that you could just say oh i'm not gonna vote on this like come on man like some a project there in downtown la imagine if everyone just kind of like sat back down for every project that's being brought up like that makes absolutely no sense and i know some of you guys are shaking your heads or whatever but it's like vote on it like why are you there if you're not there to vote yay or nay on something then get the heck out of there Thank you, Johnny. Uh, Peter? Peter, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, um, I'll make it quick. I just wanted to thank those board members that voted against the proposed hotel. Um, and, you know, I just have to say, it, I don't think anybody brought up views tonight, Ryan. Um, it's not really about that. It's not a NIMBY issue. Um, I can't speak for the other HOAs, but I know that Luma didn't oppose the previous hotel. It's just this one specific project. So thank you for everybody that, uh, that did oppose it. Um, we made a lot of them happy. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> uh, and that's it from public comments. Let's close the public comments. Thank you, public comments are closed. We have the uh, open seat announcement Jose, do you have the open seats in front of you? So the open seats are the area wide homeless resident uh, residential director and uh, two uh, center city east business director. Thank you. Jose. All right, we have completed all of the items <coughs> tonight. Rick. Claudia yeah, has her I hand I have up. a board member announcement as well. Okay. Okay, board member announcement going with Claudia. Hi, guys. Um, would like anybody that wants to join Outreach Committee, uh, please email me at claudia.oliveira. That's O-L-I, V as in Victor, E-I-R-A, at dlink.com. Thank you. Ryan? Um, I just wanted to bring something up pretty important. A lot of people brought it up in the original public comment uh, and also during our votes and stuff. We're all sitting here. We all won. Election is behind us. Regardless, the way that this election was carried out was an abomination. Um, the city clerk should be fully held responsible. We should find a way to make it easier for people to register and to vote. I personally, personally registered 120 people. I called every, each of them took 15 minutes. I called every single one of them. I only, you can go look at the vote tally. I mean, maybe there's a percentage that wasn't comfortable telling me how they want to vote, fine. I got 33 votes. Of every four people I registered, three of the four people either did not get a ballot or got a ballot for a completely different election. Somebody got a ballot to vote for uh, like something not even relating to neighborhood council. We also had offered to, uh, a situation where somebody who was verified and registered as a candidate was then rejected as a registrant to vote in the same election that they're a candidate. So I don't know how we have to address this, but we can't forget about it now that the election's over. I propose, Rick, if you're able to, to put together some kind of an ad hoc committee, I know everybody from every side of whatever aisle you wanna call it, is concerned about this. Um, I know members of the public uh, who spoke today are definitely concerned about it. This is a great opportunity. We talk about engagement to get people engaged together because we all, no matter what your views are on anything, I think we all were really disappointed by the way that this was handled and we need to make our voices heard on that. Let's, uh, now we need to have uh, an ad hoc committee on this as an agenda item because <clears throat> that's a requirement. Um, 
Right. So, so I'm just making that suggestion. Take it for what you will, but we can't forget about this. We got to put it on our list. The second thing I wanted to say is, as I said, elections are over. We're all a team. I want to personally get to know every single one of you. I'm not going to agree with you. You're not going to agree with me every single vote and every single day, but I will treat you with the same respect that I hope you treat me. I hope that goes for everyone on this committee. And I'm really, really looking forward to meeting a whole new class of people in downtown. And I really hope we can maybe meet together in person, outdoors, do something within the rules of the Brown Act. Hopefully we can all find an excuse to, to meet each other and make this a little bit more personal. Um, and I'm look, looking forward to working with all of you guys for the next two years. Thank you, Ryan. Lori? Just wanted to say congratulations to everyone that was that was elected and um, something that I'm really looking forward to. And I know it's probably important to a lot of the people that are listening and I hope to work um, with the executive committee on is our, our availability of information. Um, I've been to many board meetings and many pluck meetings, but I never really bothered to pay attention to the agenda in advance and was appalled that it took me 30 minutes to find our agenda af like after it was posted, even though I'm on the board, it took me 30 minutes to find it. And then it took me another 30 minutes to like figure out because everything was like randomly labeled and not really clear. It took me another 30 minutes just to put everything in order of like what letter went with what project and what was happening. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people that are out there that are frustrated by that. And I really look forward to working with you guys to um, make that better. Actually, Lori, you trigger a question. Oh, is there someone else? Cause I don't want no. to jump with anybody else. Uh, <clears throat> Patty, if you're still on, who is, who's our, could you email me the contact for our website? Of course, I will do that. Thank you very much. Uh, and has that person basically been working with you just for a, a point of information? Uh, so Lori, as you heard earlier, I shared that. And as a relatively new member, experienced that same thing. And those of us who are board members, uh, I can't imagine the public even putting up with 13 minutes, uh, we're obligated to understand this stuff. So we've got to do better on it, I agree. Yeah. I would hope that we can get the email addresses set up as soon as possible, because I really don't want to be sending anything from my personal email address. Right, oh, that's a good point, Jim. <clears throat> when you're doing DLANC business, you need to use your DLANC email. You should not use personal email. <clears throat> this is a, you know, that we keep the business of this in one place because if anyone requests it, they will, and you're using your own email, that could open up your whole email uh, to uh, Brown Act issues. I just- I second, Jim. Yeah, Richard, if you could prioritize that, I'd really appreciate it. Sorry? I, I, I second what Jim said too. If you could prioritize that, I would really appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, I'll talk to Jose and see. Well, actually, the emails are on our website person, so uh, that'll that'll be on my list later today since it's 1208. Okay, I have violated a fundamental rule of mine as far as a long meeting. Next agenda, we're going to have to uh, crisp this up. I do want to end with one announcement <clears throat> that I'm really looking at. The Pluck Committee is an example of having, you know, it says four to seven. We're only entitled to have six, really. Uh, board members. I'd really like to see uh, five or six board members on, on livability, on uh, urban issues, on outreach, and then how committees expand beyond that is something we have to discuss. We have certain fundamentals in our bylaws that most of the committees are members of three. Now, that's not going to work for outreach. That's not going to work for most things. So we've got the model on where it's been working with, with Pluck, and I want to see how we can ex expand that. And that's something that we will be taking up as an agenda item in our next meeting. So let's uh, call it a day before it turns any moments later. I look forward to working with all of you and thank you for your efforts and your time tonight. Extraordinary. See you soon.
Have a good night. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Good night, everybody. Good night. <clears throat>